talk about some wrestling on this one. Hey, Eureka. Uh, we make plays every day, yeah. Yeah, we make uh-huh. plays every day, yeah. We make plays every day, yeah. We make plays every day, yeah. Macho man. Welcome, welcome to the Real Fantasy Playmakers. I am your host, Bogard Scott Free. And yes, this is a fantasy show, and we will touch on a little bit of fantasy football, a little bit of NFL, but this is a very special episode right here. We're taking it back to one of my, my childhood loves. We're talking about pro wrestling. And with that said, I'm going to introduce our very special guest host, He's a host of his own podcast, the Xenocast. It's our man, the C S Z. What's happening? What's going on, people? Oh, I'm sorry, playmakers. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? What's going on, man, man? You know what I'm saying? I've been uh, I've been following you for a good while. You know what I mean? Um, I just enjoy the content. You know what I mean? I love I love someone who's passionate about whatever the fuck they're passionate about. And in this case, you're very passionate about wrestling. You know what I mean? It, it is a significant part of my life growing up. I actually, I'm a recording artist and a producer. You know what I'm saying? But um, mm-hmm. my, when I was a kid, bro, when when I went around in a circle, like in kindergarten, you know what I'm talking about? Like, you know, they go around in a circle and you stand up one at a time and you say what you want to be when you grow up. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I straight up said I wanted to be a pro wrestler. You know what I'm saying? Hey man, that's um. It was funny that a lot of famous wrestlers had that same moment as children. You know that a lot of us regular people have had. It's just for some of us, um, we we just got so committed to it that they ended up getting into the field and you know doing really well. So hey man, it's it's normal to really. Love it from a childhood uh, standpoint, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, well, check this out. Our man, the CSZ. Is, we're just welcoming in, but check this out, my guy. We're going to go ahead and handle some quick housekeeping. Follow us at the GMM Network on Twitter. Follow us at the GMM Network on IG. Also, follow me at Bogard Scott Free World as well on IG. Also, check us out at rumboys.com. That's rumboys with a Z.com. That's where you're going to find all our latest and greatest articles from the innovative writing writing team, writing staff. Shout out to all them. They come in with the ill articles. That's also where you're going to be able to order all the Rum Boys merch. You know what I'm saying? That's R U M B O Y Z.com. Also, want to shout out the, the official Rum Boys sponsor, Monkey Knife Fight. Go ahead to monkeyknifefight.com, make you an account, and we'll match your first deposit all the way up to $50. You might as well throw that $50 because you'll get a hundo. You know what I mean? Don't fuck around and throw $10 and only get $20 to play with. You know what I mean? We got sports coming back. DFS in full swing. It's, it, 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 I'm speaking into it existence. My man, CSZ, right here, the CSZ, he's from Texas. It, they're open up. You know what I mean? Um, hopefully, the, you know, the rest of the states will be able to follow their lead. You know what I'm saying? I am from Cali. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're starting to slowly, slowly, I guess, open up. But where I'm from specifically yeah. in the Bay Area, you know what I'm saying? We're still locked down. But anyways, go on Monkey Knife Fight. Use promo code RUMBOYS, all capitals, R-U-M-B-O-Y-Z. And on your first deposit, we'll match it all the way up to $50. Also, special shout out. To our sponsor, Milk and Honey TX, for all your CBD goodness and all your CBD wellness, please visit MilkandHoneyTX.com. Hey, and my man, the host of the Xenocast, go ahead and tell them where they can find the CSZ. Well, you can find me. Uh, I do love wrestling, but I, I do talk about uh, a variety of topics. Um, a lot of uh, real world things too. Uh, a little bit of my other love outside of wrestling, which is football. Which oh, I know yeah. we share that little common interest as well. 
Oh, yeah. uh, but you can listen to my podcast on um, Anchor uh, FM, yeah, Anchor FM, uh, Stitcher Radio. Uh, mm-hmm. It's available on Spotify, Google Podcasts. Majority of places where you can find most general podcasts, you can find my podcast there, the Xenocast. And um, I'm also uh, looking to start an online, uh, more um, in-depth wrestling series on YouTube in the next coming uh, week or so. So um, whenever I get that up and running, I would love to have you on there. Oh, man, I appreciate that. And I'll definitely definitely help broadcast the brand new new channel that you put out. You know what I mean? Because, man, like, yeah, man. And so once again, Playmakers, that's the Xenocast. The Z-E-N-O cast on all streaming platforms. And be on the lookout shortly for his YouTube channel on the way. You know what I'm saying? Stone Cold. And, well, oh, 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 and that's the bottom line. Go ahead, Stone Cold. Stone Cold said go. Oh, one more game. Because uh, mm-hmm. Stone Cold What? Stone. What? Stone Cold. Oh, my God. That's, what? That's something you can still do to this day. Oh, yeah. That's like, my... literally this. Like, whoever you're doing it to, go crazy. Okay. You know? I definitely have a story, uh, but I'll, I'll get into that later about you know uh, being able to witness the and uh, be in the crowd like the front row and with the whole what you know when the what shit was popping off back. Anyways, but you know what, my man, the C S Z, let them know a little bit about where you're from, and um, you know a little bit about yourself, man. Well, I am the C S Z. I'm from and I currently live in uh, Houston, Texas. Um, the fourth largest city in the country, which is, you know, the weirdest town. Oh, you know? yeah. and, like, so weird. Yeah, I agree, Macho Man. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, my love for um, professional wrestling, it stems back from um, around 98, 97. I was around four years old, I believe. Wow, that's the, and right that's before, the attitude era. Yeah, oh, yeah, right in the middle, you know, of it. And my older cousins, who uh, I have siblings, but I didn't grow up with any in the house. It was just me and my mom. So I would go with my, to my aunt's house, and my older cousins would always be watching Monday Night Raw after Bible study. So I didn't stay the whole two hour episode, but. Yeah, that was when it was at Raw was, is it, War. Remember that? Yeah, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah, there you go. And then. I think the first hour will be Raw as War, and then the second hour will be Warzone. Yeah, exactly. There you it, go. It's not, yeah, it's not a big difference, but if you paid attention, yeah, that, that's when that's when you would see booty cheeks, and and you know what I'm saying, you'd see uh, you know you know women's uh, women's in their bras and panties, and you know you, the, the language <laughs> might be a little more vulgar. They might you might see a little color, as they would call it in the business, yeah. you know, blood. You know what I mean? So yeah. hey, that that's when you like really was locked in to it. That second hour, first hour, cool. The yeah. second hour, that's when it gets turned up. So. Oh yeah, yeah. The first hour thing, was kind of like a. It's kind of more the cutting promos, and you know what I'm saying. You, you, then you had the you know the you had the under the undercards, obviously. But yeah, it was all about mm-hmm. promos building up to that whatever that last that last 15, 20 minutes of the goddamn war zone was always nutty. And sometimes they would even go that extra two or three minutes after, you know, after it was supposed to be done because it was just oh, like, yeah. yeah, and I used to just be hanging on my seats. I, and I was, you know, I was in junior high at the time in this year. And I remember, uh, you know, my pops, he was real strict. You know what I'm saying? By this time, I had my own TV because, you know, I came from a household where we, we basically had one TV. But I remember yeah. one, one year we bought a new TV. So I got the old joint. And I put it in my room, and I had the cable <laughs> popping off, and I'd be just sneak. I pretend I'm sleeping, and I'd be watching it, like with hell, you know, hella quiet. Had the volume hella down, you know what I mean? And just like, oh man, and yeah. Tuesday morning, we talking about that joint with all the homies. You know what I mean? Yo, did you yeah, see Raw? Man. Yeah, but yeah, go on, go on. Um, yeah, so they were my cousins. They were around junior high age, you know, so they were doing the same thing as you were doing, except my aunt, she actually liked the wrestling. Oh, nice. Too. So, you know, it was kind of like a little mini family affair. It was um, a nice little balance then, after Bible study, and then you go ahead, go ahead and watch some wrestling, babies. 
You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> uh, so uh, the, the little thing was, I was I wasn't quite into it because I didn't have cable. So you know, um, come 1999, uh, you know, I'm like in kindergarten, uh, and then a show called SmackDown starts coming on the UPN. Oh and then that's yeah, when it, like, that's right. Became a thing. That's when it really became like, okay, yeah. I'm watching this every week. Yeah, <laughs> man. I mean, and like, like even, and and, and uh, they started uh, a little earlier too, if I remember correctly. They started like at eight o'clock versus the, the, the normally starting at nine o'clock with the Monday Night Raw. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think uh, Eastern Time. I mean, we are in Central here in Houston, oh, that's but right, that's Eastern right. Time Raw would be at eight, and then SmackDown is known for always starting at seven. Yep. Um, just that's recently, right. like five, six years ago, when Raw expanded permanently to three hours, which was not a good idea. Because yeah. um, they, they, they couldn't started, fill the three hours with, with quality anymore. You know, it, it seemed when you expand, what they used to do when it would be three hours, it would be like a special show, like the draft or a yep. super show or, or like an, uh, something special. Yeah, yeah, a dedication show, like if you know if one of the wrestlers had passed or some shit, they would have a whole, you know, it would be an extra hour for sure. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah but... It, that's something that I'm gonna dive into the lot, the lack of quality and the attempt to get quality back into the WWE because pro wrestling is more than just the WWE. You yeah. know, um, you're aware of the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. The great, the, this, one of the huh? greatest lisps. He has the greatest lisp in the game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um. Uh, <laughs> He really, he really did have a mean though. list, though. You feel me? <laughs> you knew what I knew what I meant. <laughs> I think it's fun. I think Cody Rose got, has one, too. Oh, yeah, like father, like son. For sure he does. It, yeah, and, crazy, and Cody but... Rhodes is actually spearheading. Uh, he's he's partnered up in that, uh, A, what is it, AE Wrestling? AEW. AEW, That there was just go. what I was about to get to. He yeah. has his own promotion. And oh, they're actually this, giving, um, they're giving the WWE a run for the money. Yeah, yeah, as far as wrestling quality, like, it's more indie style instead of sports entertainment. Yeah, you know? because once they once they were, they couldn't, like, you know, you couldn't have colored matches, you know, it's fun. And, and playmakers, when I say colored matches, I mean bleeding, you know what I mean? So, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And then, yeah. like, you know, you know the, 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 the whole CTE, you know, after especially after Chris Benoit's crazy, um, you know, suicide, uh, uh, double yeah. murder, suicide. But then at the same time, I really think... You know, it was CTE, so I don't even want to call it murder suicide. He wasn't the person; he wasn't right in the head. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, he. That, then that's like uh, with same thing with football. CTE head trauma is bad. Like it yeah. can get really bad. Yeah, you like know? he and had the brain. With, he had the brain of an eighty-year-old man with dementia. By the time he yeah you know, he did that shit, so like equivalent but, to the equivalent to the an eighty-year-old man with dementia, I should say. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but uh, but also, um, yeah, that definitely changed it. Where like now you can't just full on crack a motherfucker in the dome piece with a chair, you know, sixty miles yeah. swinging a chair sixty miles an hour. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Give me, remember, when they used to take chair shots, they didn't put up their hands back in the day. Like, no, they, they the took chair, it like head on. Like, do you, you know? okay, do you remember? There's, a, I mean, I know you said you had WWE Network when we were uh, talking off air, right? And, uh, yes. Did you see when The Rock, when he when he uh, it was for the title, he was, he was wrestling Mankind, and he had yeah, handcuffed he Mankind. Yeah, him with the chair shot. Yeah, yeah, and then Mankind's like, just keep giving them to me, and he's just like, you even even though The Rock's still in character, you know it, it is, you know it is a show, and he's just like shaking his head like, damn, dude, okay, yeah, you know what I mean, just yeah, yeah. He's laying and it on. Nick Foley. He is one of those guys. Yeah, that, like give it to me, man. Let's let's give them a show. Yeah, he, you know he's, what I mean? gonna, he's gonna push the boundaries of reality. You know, oh, yeah. he's gonna make you believe as much as he can. Like this is real. Yeah, this like bro. When I was a kid, at all. <laughs> okay, so check this out. I love that you said that word ballet because my dad, my you know, I'm a first generation born Filipino American, and my dad, you know, my dad, you know, he he's a um, he came here. In 1978 to San Francisco, he was 19 years old. So my get my dad mm -hmm. grew up out here. You know what I mean, out in the Bay Area. You know what I mean, okay. so, right? So 
But he, you know, so my dad's kind of a macho dude, you know what I mean? When he would be like, man, why are you watching this ballet in their underwear? You know what I mean? Like, he used to always like, and like, I, he'd be like, you know, that shit is fake, right? And I'd be like, I'd, as a little kid, I'd defend it. Like, no, it's not because, you know, guys like Bret Hart made it fucking look legit. You know what I mean? Like, yep. Bret yeah. Hart would like, Bret Hart's he is he, one of them, yeah. yeah. He would like, you know, he would before he slapped the sharpshooter, you know, he would spend all the match, you know, fucking your lower back up, fucking your legs up, your knees. And then when he slaps that sharpshooter on, boom, you tapping out. So it was like, to me, yep. it was like, yo, he made, he made the technical wrestling style made, made, he sold it to me. You know what I mean? Like, even though the punches were with forearms and stuff like that, I was, I would argue when I was in elementary, I used to argue with kids because, you know, you were either a wrestling fan or not. And if you weren't, yeah. if you weren't, you would say it was fake. You know what I mean? Yeah, you were. Ain't that right, Macho Man? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I was, uh, I, you know, like 20 minutes before we got started, I was chopping up some drops. I was like, I need some Macho Man. I need some Stone Cold. You know what I'm saying? I, I need some, I need some Ric Flair woos. You know what I mean? Like, like but yeah. Um, okay, so, 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 so continue. So, you know what I mean? You know, uh. uh so, um, yeah, so once SmackDown came into the fold, came on network television, I was in. Um, I, already, I even remember one of the best WrestleManias to ever happen. Later. WrestleMania 17, where The Rock faced uh, Stone Cold. I really <laughs> wanted to go, but I couldn't. But it, it was here in my hometown at uh, the Astrodome. Yeah, I that remember was that. like the last event, the Astrodome. Hill, like one of the last events it held there. So oh, yeah, like before, they, they, before they shut down. That's right. And, bro, like, that was, like, the pinnacle of both of those guys because, you know, if you think about it, Stone Cold, he, you know, he kind of tapered off on purpose after that because, like, yeah. because of, like... It was a like, lot of backstage yeah, stuff. Exactly. Man. A lot of politics. Also, just nursing yeah. this. Nursing, you know, he had the two bad knees. He had the bad neck. From Owen Hart, you know, rest, rest in peace. You know what I mean? Where it was just like, you know, his quality of life wasn't really, wasn't what, you know, it wouldn't have been long before his quality of life was shitty. So he was like, he was slowing down as far, and he was more, first of all, bro, if you remember Stone Cold from the 90s, right? If you, I, mean, I, know, I know if you went back and studied, you know, old shit, bro, he was a technical wrestler. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah. And, like, and then before you know, before the Attitude Era, where it just really he really became like a full on brawler. You know what I mean? Like just the brawling style, put kick him, kick him in the corner, stomp him out, oh, yeah. stomp a mud hole, mud hole in their ass. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's the thing. Like he could wrestle. Like Stone Cold is one of the as far as great as he is. He's a very interesting case because realistically, you can say from '96 to 2000. Three. Mm-hmm. That's only seven years right there. That was yeah. Stone Cold's like meet WWF WWE run in seven years. Yeah. Compared to somebody like you know the Undertaker who started in ninety one and till just had a match. Yeah. Um, Fucking you legend. know well yeah he had the the damn it, it wasn't a very lot very a lot of match they changed the name of it. Oh, a Boneyard match. Yeah, yeah, that's um, right. He just had that against AJ Styles a couple months that's ago. That's right. Hey, it was like a fucking so, movie. It was like uh, watching man. a movie. That shit was dope. I can't lie. Like, that yeah. shit was awesome. And, I, I, well, I don't know if you heard about it, but watching that match, it should also make you uh, want to watch The Undertaker's series. Yeah, yeah, no, the last ride. ride. Yeah, I caught a, I caught a little, uh, you know, little snippets of it, but I'm kind of waiting for it to build up, and I'm gonna binge it. You know what I mean? Oh man, it is good, bro. Like, if you ever only thought of the Undertaker as either a motorcycle badass or like a little dead man, it'll show you who he actually is as a person. Man, yeah, and he's he's, uh, like a, he's from Texas. He's a Texas boy too. Yeah, yeah, Texas man to his heart. So, uh, you know, uh, Texans got to stick together. Yeah, uh, Lone Star uh, State. <laughs> yeah, you know um, but it, it's just, they did a really good job. Like, the WWE, they have one of the best, like, document documentary uh, people. Yeah. Like, a, a lot of their series are really, really well shot. Like, yeah, bro, I mean, like, I... 
I'm a fan of uh, wrestling with shadows, the Bret Hart one, or even just uh, you know, all the uh, you know the the Bret Hart Shawn Michaels uh, joint they had where it documented their their beef, you know, over the years. Like, oh yeah. The, the, um, you know, speaking of things like that, it's a, it's also another series called Vice Dark Side of the Ring. Yeah, it talks about love the it. Montreal Fucking job, love it. And like a lot of other stuff, even Owen Hart's death. Yeah, even uh, uh, I, I just seen the Chris week. Benoit one, the Chris Benoit joint. That was that was pretty dark too, man. Like. It's, a, oh, it's man, an incredible was, series. Yeah. Playmakers, you know what I'm saying? I don't mind plugging this these motherfuckers for free. You know what I'm saying? The, the <laughs> behind, what was it? Behind the wrestling, you know, feel me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that shit went, that shit goes hard. Okay, so, uh, so, yeah. you know, so going back to that WrestleMania, you know what I mean? What was, what's the one thing that you, that you remember? Like, you know, because I know you said that's the one that kind of, it's, it, it's, it's, it's in, in, in steeled in your memory. You know what I mean? Yeah, that one, uh, not only because it was here in Houston, um, looking as a child, like, yeah, it was great. Like, the whole card, uh, shoot, every match on that card, if you look at it today, you'd be like, okay, I know that's a good match. Even like, uh, yeah, I, think it was, I think it was like Chris Benoit versus Eddie Guerrero. I oh, think, or yeah. Either it was it, either it was Kurt Angle versus what? What are the two? I think it was the three the of them. I, wasn't it the triple threat? It could have been. I know. I do know there was. The I do know there was a triple threat between. It was Benoit Angle and somebody, and I just remember because remember, remember Kurt Angle he, at one point he he ripped off the mult the multiple German suplexes. Yes. Yeah, so it was like it was like Benoit hit him with like eight in a row and then yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Benoit, Stone Cold, and Angle. Damn, I hope I'm correct on this one. But bro, I just oh, remember I, I think d- no no, cause Stone Cold he faced the rock in the main event. Oh, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. He it, I don't know if you realized it, but that match was the I guess the, the pinnacle of the attitude there. Yeah. Because like well, that was right that, before like a, that was right before they started the. In, that was right before they started the invasion uh, storyline. Remember that? Yeah, like yeah. literally the week before that WrestleMania, Vince Man purchased WCW. Like, yep. They they before the event, and then yep. the whole Shane appearing and on Nitro and yep. all that stuff happened. Yeah, uh, and then fucking history. Love it. His what Austin has always said is when he did in the ring, when he aligned himself with McMahon. Was the biggest like? Oh yeah, because because you gotta remember the rock, career, like, the rock, the yeah. rock, and and Stone Cold. They were the fan favorite heels. You know what I mean? They were the, oh, they, they 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 actually coined a new term for for that type of wrestler, the babyface heel. You know what I mean? Yep. Where it was like these guys are some bad motherfuckers. They doing some bad. They doing some bad guy heel shit. But at the end of the day. Uh, the, the, the fans love them, so they they love them like a baby face. Yeah. So they were the baby the face heels, and like that was when he went full heel, stone cold, because the uh, the you know the WWF at the time, you know the, the WWF universe, bro, they were not fucking with that. Remember, they were hot about that shit, and he and he became uh what was it was it the, the corporate or corporation or corporate stone cold? Um, or? No, it was uh, he. It, he, the next night after WrestleMania on Raw, he aligned himself with Triple H, and they became the two man power trip. That's and what it they was. That's took, what it was. They took the WWF Championship and the Continental Championship and the Tag Team Championships for ransom for like two, three yeah, months. Yeah, I even, remember even that. Even them, the Undertaker and Kane couldn't even get it from them. So, and, hey, and okay, that actually, led actually. to Triple H's injury too. Let me. Oh yeah, that's right. And his 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 uh, his ACL right was it was it, it was definitely yeah. Yeah. And, and he that's was why during all the That's when he yeah, came back. When he came back, bro, roided out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh man, you talking about a dude? A specimen, that, and like, like he became one of my. He was one of my favorites at that time too, just because he had that look. He had the look of classic wrestling. You know, because you know classic mm-hmm. wrestling was big. You know, you know, big superhero type. You know, behemoth men. You know what I mean? But he was wrestling like a he was wrestling like a youngster, wrestling with the new style. You know what I mean? Yeah. With doing the three sixty backbreakers and the fucking you know the the, the high knee, exactly. throwing him on the ropes with the high knee, and you know what I mean? Like he yeah yeah. yeah. 
and he and maybe quite Shawn Michaels, but he was close. Yeah, like, I close mean, Shawn Michaels exactly, because he was quite agile. But you know what though? Is it safe to say he was a uh, he was goddamn doing steroids, hoping that his body will bulk up so his nose will look proportionate. <laughs> Oh man, that, nah, man, that guy. He's like a yeah, nose man. with arms and legs on it, bro. He's a nose. Bro. <laughs> Triple nose is what they should have called him. But yeah, okay. <laughs> so check this out. So, you know what I mean? Now, you know, you got full on wrestling. We'll fast forward a little bit because I, I wanna know, like, what was the moment when you were like, bro, I'm about to I'm about to go ahead and start a podcast where I could talk about all the things I love, including wrestling, including sports. Like what what it, and, and also tell me, is, is it just you on the podcast? Because, I, I mean, uh, from the yeah, ones I checked out, it, the ones I checked out, you know, I, the ones I heard is just you, but I'm wondering if, like, you know, every so often you bring on a co-host or... Yeah, um, I do have, I think, either one or two episodes uh, with my girlfriend on there. Nice. Uh, is she we a wrestling fan, about too? Huh? Is she a wrestling fan as well? Yeah, she is. That's awesome. You know, she's not as, as crazy as I am, but if I if, we, if I'm watching wrestling, she will watch it with me. And she like she's she has been watching since like the 2010, 2011. So yeah, she doesn't know like much before that, but yeah. anything after that, she's familiar. So you know, your Rey Mysterio, Randy Orton, Sheamus, guys like that. Yeah, she, yeah, she yeah. Like, the, Cl- the Celtic Warrior. And oh uh, man. Hey, but, um, he was dope. To answer your, huh? No, no, yeah, go ahead to answer my question. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, to answer your question, with um, so uh, 2010, uh, SmackDown left UPN, well, left my network, whatever, and went to Sci Fi. So yeah, that means wrestling that wasn't, yeah, it wasn't on um, broadcast television. It, it correct so, me if I'm wrong, is this when they went to the Tuesdays, too? Yeah, yeah, it did go to Tuesdays. Um, so with that happening and I, I still didn't have cable, hey, hey, I keep on, stopped. keep on telling the story. I'm just gonna, I gotta grab something right behind this door. Keep on telling the story. Okay. Um, yeah, so I actually stopped re- watching wrestling from like 2010, um, to like 2016. So for about six years, I didn't watch wrestling. Like, uh, I, I fell out of love with it. You know, you can say that. And you can also say because I was getting older as well. Uh, but the one thing that got me, drew me back into wrestling is when Brock Lesnar broke the streak in 2014. Now, I didn't get quite back into it, but slowly but surely I started reading articles, watching clips here and there. And then in 2016, I was just sitting in my car one day. I was like, man, I'm about to watch WrestleMania. So... I watched it, loved it. it. The fire, the passion I had, it was instantly back, you know. Um, so, and then I started uh, listening to podcasts that same year. I'm not, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, the ESPN podcast or whatever, but um, yeah, I have started listening to those. And then slowly but surely, I kind of built my confidence up to kind of start talking in front of people. Nice. And um, talking to an audience, and yeah, you know, uh, small clips here, little recordings here. Uh, it led to last year. I actually was like, you know what? I'm about to do it officially. I'm about to Full finally, you know, put. And it was just on my phone. Like I don't have a setup yet. I don't have a mic. I don't have a computer, but. No, but you know what, though? It's dope because getting started is the hardest thing sometimes for content creators. And, like, you you know, know, sometimes people, they imagine, okay, when I get started, I got to build my little home setup with my microphones and this and that. And, you know, they're thinking Mm -hmm. big. When really it's like the content, if the content is good, and it's it's the same same way I reached out to you because I appreciated your content, you know what I mean? Where I was like, yeah, where I was like, yo, this, this, this dude is dope. And, and, and I and, and I always I strongly believe like you know what I mean the the content is key and then after that the more you, the, the, you know if you dress it up more it only gets the content only gets that much more better you know what I mean like yes right exactly. like starting from square one is where everyone should start no one starts at the top you know what I mean like so in this case mm-hmm. too like I, I love the grassroots you know what I mean you know and like you know we're living in a day and age where it's like 
Yo, you could damn there just order a goddamn uh, podcasting kit even. See, for me, yeah. for me, I, I, you know, I have a music background, so I already had all the shit, you know what I mean? Where I was just like, it, it, was, it was really a matter of just like figuring my way out, you know what I mean? Like figuring how I'm going to do this. Mm-hmm. And then, then, you know, then I used to try to pack everything within an hour and I'm like, you know what? Fuck that. I'm going hard. Like, you know what I mean? Like there is yeah, a market for people like, that oh, listen yeah. to like long playing podcasts. So, you know, my joints be like averaging an hour and a half. Like, look, we, we easily spent like 30, 40 minutes right now just talking, you know, getting, getting you familiar with my audience because it, that's important to me before we actually start, you know, you know, just, you know, talking, you know outside of that so, so so continue so now you so now you got your thing rocking you started from the phone and then like you know so last year you really kicked it in the gear yeah last year was the year like i started uh i got the anchor app on my phone uh they actually like let me record uh i had for the for the app which oh, yeah. is you know they gave me my first read you know so yeah, so it, it's, it's getting it you versed like into that. like journalism. Like now you're now you're in sports broadcasting now. You know what I mean? Man, you're getting and ads and shit. It's funny. It's funny that you bring that up because that's what I actually want to go back to school and get a degree in now. Look at that. You know, see because this because now you're I inspired. Like, when, yeah, when I was in uh, college, I was there for a year. Didn't really know what I wanted to do at for a career yet. Yeah. I always knew I love sports. I, I love sports. Like. Love it. Um, then I started listening and reading more and understanding that sports does have a big con- connection with life, uh, both positive and negative, you know, and mm-hmm. that's a world that a lot of people don't know about, but a, a world that a lot of people are more close to than they realize, you know. Yeah, man. I mean, think about yeah. this. What I, You know how I view sports in general or even wrestling? <laughs> Right, even sports, wrestling, whatever, whatever, whatever you want to use the analogy. The analogy I will compare it to is like gang culture, because mm. people that aren't that didn't grow up in gang culture, like I, you know, I grew up. I mean, I grew up. My family, my family's involved in gang cultures. You know, yada yada yada. We won't really get into mm. that, right? Right, but bro, like, look at the D Generation X or uh, the Heart Foundation. Like, they, they were factions. NWO. NWO, they modeled their shit after a gang. Just, you know what I mean? Where it's like strength yeah. in numbers and if people want to, they, they want to rock the colors. They want to rock, you know what I mean? Like, or like in sports, hey, like you're a cowboy, I'm a niner. Yo, we might not agree with a lot of things, you know what I mean? It's kind of like your gang versus mine, you know what I mean? It's like, that's yeah. it. And like, you know, so it's like you said, it has the good and the bad and the ugly, you know what I mean? All rolled in one. And that's what we, the lovely thing we call sports. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah, bro. I, 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 I think, like, uh, that's why when people are, like, super sports fans, and then you have people who are not sports fans, yeah, yeah. they always and then you have the casual look fans. at them crazy. Yeah. It's like, it's, like you just said, if you didn't grow up in it or grow up close enough to understand it, you won't quite get it. Exactly, you know? bro. That's, that's, see, but you, you it put is, it better than me. You definitely put it better than it's me. It's one of the more easier ways of life. Well, at least American life. But you can also say international, you know, with like uh, sports like soccer and, and basketball and even wrestling. Like wrestling is really international. You it's know, worldwide. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's I mean, worldwide. Even the era, and, and thought, bro, the era of wrestling that we were, you know, we were just talking about. You know, what I mean, that that was when it was like, yo, they really, they really, they're doing Europe tours. They're going to like the Middle East. They're going places that they wouldn't even, and they weren't even, because, you know, America, we're kind of hated around the world. and But, but like, they love the WWF. They love the WWE, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I mean, other, oh, yeah. you know, WCW and NWA, they never reached those heights, like, like, like Vince McMahon, good old Uncle Vince. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it, uh, it, man, they got Vince McMahon. You want to talk about, he might not be quite the wrestling expert, but, he is one hell of a marketer, bro. He can market bro, the fuck out of something. Yes. Like, do you remember when Under- the Undertaker was the dead man? Did you, did you go? Uh-huh. Did you go back far when, like, in the early Undertaker days, early '90s? I think it was it was Survivor Series '94. They had Undertaker versus Undertaker. Like that oh, yeah, was incredible. That that's incredible. 
where it was like he, he, he had a guy on the low for like six, seven months growing his hair out. You know, saying, okay, you're going to be the other, you're going to be the other, the doppelganger Undertaker. You know what I mean? I think it was yeah. Isaac, Isaac Yankum, huh? The, the, the same dude who ended up playing. Um, uh, I, he ended up playing. I, I know, it, was, uh, it was one of the dudes who ended up, I think he ended up being Crush. Crush? No, yeah, that's I, Isaac That's Isaac Yankum. Yep. No, no, Isaac Young, Isaac Yankum is Kane. Oh, okay, so I'm mixing the two. See, I love it. I love it. Yeah, I love it, CSV. Or CSZ, he's lacing game, lacing me up with some game right here. You know what I mean? Man, I, I'm sorry, I'm a wrestling nerd. No, I'm no, I, I want to be, I want to be completely accurate for the playmakers. You know what I'm saying? If we're gonna talk oh, some no wrestling, problem. you know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so. I'm sorry, I've been drinking this Red Bull. No, it's all good, amazing. man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, hey, Red, <laughs> Red Bull, Red Bull, give me money. You know what I'm saying? Red, yeah. Red Bull, sponsor my man over here. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Sponsor the Zeno cast. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm drinking something that doesn't quite give me wings. You know what I'm saying? But it definitely makes me, it definitely makes me feel like I'm flying high. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. As long as it feels good, man. <laughs> I mean, you know what? We are living in some times, man. And, and you know, what I mean, okay. So, so now, so, so you know, the Zeno cast is going. Let you know what I'm saying? And um, obviously, you know. You, you, d- you dive into different things like football. You know, you are a Dallas fan. You know, let's go ahead and switch on over. To, we'll talk a little bit of football before we get back to this wrestling, man. So, okay. I want to say something about Dak. I love Prescott. Uh, Prescott is, Prescott's legit. But what, but if there's any validity to what he's demanding, I, I, I think he's tripping. Like, you know, that whole thing. Um. Forty-five million dollars. Yeah, I mean, I know they debunked that, but then they said that wasn't true. But I kind of, I kind of think they should give him a Kirk Cousins type deal, like that the Vikings did, where you give him like three years, you know, give, give Dak three years, one hundred twenty million, fully guaranteed, and then after two seasons, hey, if he's looking like if he's looking like he's worth that money, go ahead and extend him, and because that's exactly what the Vikings did, they gave Kirk Cousins 90, 97 million, fully guaranteed, three years. The, the, after two seasons, they, they were satisfied with his production. They went ahead and extended him another year, you know, uh, after the third year. And they fully guaranteed that, too. You know what I mean? And, like, I think yeah. I think that's something. He's like, yeah, he, I know you don't like Kirk Cousins because he used to be a Redskin. <laughs> but, I mean. I mean you know, he's going to beat us twice, but he's coming. Yeah, for real. You know, I, I loved Kirk Cousins in fantasy, though, the, during those Redskin years. Oh, man. Like, every other the week, 300. Yeah, bro, he he's he, he was throwing for five thousand, for you know four thousand four thousand forty nine hundred, you know forty eight hundred, you know five thousand, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He, three years in a row, he was killing the game under that franchise tag, and I give him balls for that too because you know managing to stay healthy and and averaging like four rushing touchdowns so like a year during that time, so he was like putting himself at risk, and he and he managed to parlay that into you know ninety seven more million dollars, and now like another sixty guaranteed on top of that. This kid is caked up. You know what is really... And he only has one Kirk playoff Cousins. win. He has the same amount of playoff wins as goddamn Dak Prescott, so... Uh, yeah. Kirk Cousins... You know what? Let me just tell you how bad the, the Washington uh, Redskins are. They, yeah, when they Snyder's dropped RG3, lead. he had great, great rookie year. Second year, okay, he had the knee injury, all that. But they want to push Kirk Cousins, right? Yeah, because that was, cause Cousins, the Shanahan's were there. You know, Mike Shanahan, they, Kyle Shanahan, and that was their guy. But the owner, he wanted you know, RG3. So, you know what I'm saying? So they, once Cousins started playing, man, and he started being good, they wanted to force him out. It got so weird there. Do you feel like that's what's kind of happening right now with um, Dak Prescott, where he's playing very well, but then it's like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, like well, the really- see, being being a Cowboys fan, I've been on the Cowboys like for life. I've been watching closely since uh, Parcells has been the head coach, and yeah. Parcells, uh, people that came under Parcells, um, uh, Sean Payton and Tony Romo. Now the problem was Parcells didn't stay in Dallas long. He got replaced by Wade Phillips. Wade Phillips is not a vocal guy. No, he's not. Great defensive coordinator. Great defensive coordinator. But the thing was, um, Parcells leaving ended up making 
Sean Payton not want to take the job in Dallas and ended up going to New Orleans. Man, you know what there? and playing Bro, that that what if game. Up, can you can you huh? imagine playing that what if game? If Sean Payton, because yeah. then he still would have been there right now, and, and and perhaps Romo would have had a couple titles. Because Romo, it, see, Romo thing, could sling it, it bro. <laughs> Romo was really caught in a very bad predicament. Yeah. Because the guy, because Romo was undrafted. The guy that got him on the top was Sean Payton. Yeah. When Sean Payton went to New Orleans, he couldn't quite get Romo because he had performed enough in Dallas to where yeah, they, they really wanted paid to find him. They wanted exactly. to keep him. Exactly. And then, you know, they end up getting breathed. He's and, like, oh, you know, I'll settle for Drew Brees. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They ended up settling for a Hall of Famer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you tonight. know what? Just get a Hall of Famer. <laughs> yeah. So, in comes Wade Phillips. Defense is great. Also, with Wade Phillips coming in, um, you had a dude named, you know, DeMarcus Ware. I don't know if you ever heard yeah, of him. Come on, great, come on. I know. Great I, uh, passwords. Yep. Yeah. And then they did the same thing to him at one point. They were just like, and then they let, you know, after what, 10 <laughs> years? They let him go ahead and go on to goddamn the Broncos. They're like, just go ahead, man. I would, yeah, I would. Oh, oh no, no, no. Was it Indy? Was it Indy or the Broncos? No, he went to he went to Denver because he yeah, that's right, that's right. Okay, I had right. Manny. Yep. So, but Jason Garrett, for one, Jason Garrett, he ended up getting away. Phillips fired because he sabotaged the first half of the 2010 season. Yeah. Jason remember. Garrett was the offensive coordinator after Sean Payton left. He ended up wanting to be the head head uh, coach. Yeah, you know, and, and, and he he, he was the on. ultimate puppet. He he was like, okay, yeah. Uncle Jerry, yes, sir, Uncle Jerry, sir. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And what I hate was he didn't know how to he didn't know how to have his own mind. He would always play not to lose. He wouldn't play the win. I, I had a and, theory. I had a theory that he he's actually a sophisticated cyborg. And Jerry Jones actually would be in the control room controlling him. <laughs> it, it's so crazy because if you see him, it really looks like that. Yeah, he's like, he it, presses the clap button. Jerry Jones is in the control room. Press clap button. Oh. Just claps. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Smile and clap. He, he is such, he's not a bad head coach. He's just not a very good one. I'm not going to lie. Because it, it, it shows. That's why Dallas, 8-8, eight eight. you know, we do good, make the playoffs, you know, division around exit, you know. It's a reason why Dallas never uh, went further than we have, and that's because we didn't have the right people, we didn't have the right leader in charge. Now with McCarthy, not only do you have somebody with experience, you do have somebody that's going to make players be accountable. And not just, you know, the the, the, the second to last guy to make the team. No, if Ezekiel Elliott is not hitting the hole like he should, he's going to get on him. You know, and he's right. not afraid to be like, you know, Zeke, sit down in the series. Tony Pollard, you're in. You know, uh, Amari Cooper, you're dropping so many passes. We're going to need you to sit down. You know, put C.D. Lamb in there. Put him at one. Let him, you know, take control of the game or do something. Yeah, or you, or you, you mean like Michael Gallup or like or like uh, uh, who was it? Uh, 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 Randall Cobb. Yeah, you talking about? Yeah, there was a lot of those games where even the game against the Eagles on that fourth quarter drive, you know, to, to get into the playoffs, you got all you got all your best guys not on the field. Like I didn't fucking understand that. That's like okay, you're on you play a Madden right, and you you know you're trying to convert this third down or fourth down and whatever. You're going to your best and, guy. For one, you want to have him on the field. You don't want to take out your no. You yeah. don't, don't want to be playing with the Falcons and take out Julio Jones on the obvious passing now. No, you know right. what I'm saying. That that's like that's like when coaches out coach themselves. You know what I mean? Like they're yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like like yo, and then they have to they have to make they have to come up with an excuse. Well, you know, I felt um, you know the best opportunity or best chance to win at that moment was to keep Cooper on the sideline and like no 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 no. <laughs> not, my thing is, if he's not, if he's not at the level to where you know you should have him on the field, then why do you? Why did you resign him? Why would you even want him as your number one if you don't trust him? You know. But like I say, different coach, a different coaching staff. Because Dallas has had an issue where 
they don't hold players accountable. And it's been former players to say it, former coaches to say it. If you paid attention, every time Romo would broadcast a CBS game uh, and they, they would be, the Cowboys would be shown, he would always point out certain things like they didn't change, even from when he yep. was there. Mm-hmm. You know, and he like, did it, he does it in such a, prof- such a professional way without, like, you know, shitting on them. But he's really just pointing out the obvious. You know what I mean? Like, not, not only did they not change things from when he was there, Jason Garrett still brings things from when he was on the Cowboys in the 90s. Like, yeah. it's a different time, man. The game has changed. I mean, him and Jerry Jones were forever trying to recreate the triplets from the 90s, recreate the Great Wall of Dallas from the 90s, you know what I mean? And, like, he kind of achieved it at one point. You know, that, that offensive line, I mean, granted, you know, uh, Frederick Frederick's retired, you know what I'm saying? And, and yeah. you know, I'm, I'm worried about that, you know, a little bit, man, because, you know, and, and then, you know, you got Tyron Smith. He's getting up there in age, also just injury riddled. <laughs> You know what I mean? Oh like, my God! We're gonna he, see some he changes. He should have been the one to retire. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying, dude. Yeah, you know what I mean? Okay, well, let me ask you this question because you are you are out there in H Town. You know what I'm saying? Uh, one one of my colleagues, uh, uh, Miles, the, the the fantasy peacock. Shout out to the peacock. Ah, this dude. Okay. He, he's a Texans fan, right? He's from Houston as well, mm-hmm. and uh. You know he 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 constantly argues with cowboy fans. I mean, is, is it like that over there? Like, are you is there? Are you constantly arguing with these Texans fans? Well, me not really, because I'm a uh, I want a lot of us like to call it an objective cowboy fan. Which if we're sucking, I'm not going to be like, okay, we're well, America's yeah, at least team. We got it. We're America's team. Yeah, we're going no. to the Super Bowl, and yeah, yeah, we are. We are America's team. Be that as it may, but currently, right now. You know, this running back didn't pick up this blitz, or this linebacker missed this tackle, or this this edge rusher he just didn't you know go for the ball, which he should have. You know, I'm one that's actually in, invested into what are you doing right, what are you doing wrong. If you fucking up, I'm I'm not gonna say you're doing this. I'll be like, you suck. You're not doing. Your yeah, job. you're a you're, you know? see. I, this is why I respect you, bro, because. I I search far and wide to bring on fans that are real hardcore fans, but they know when it's time to take the Homer hat off. You know what I mean? Like because yeah. to, to, like I'm a Niner fan, and like I think you know our floor next year is nine and seven. You know what I mean? I think our ceiling is eleven and five, but at the same time I'm a realist where it's like yo, it's it's gonna be tough for us. Like we're not just going right back to the Super Bowl. Like. It, that's fucking very rare. That unless you're the the Patriots with Brady for all those years, you know what I mean? Like, where it's like you're willing to cheat, even you know what I mean? Like, we're going back there, yeah. win, win, lose, or draw, or cheat. You know what I mean? Like, and people see the thing with with uh, the whole pay, the whole Brady thing. Yeah, Brady has been great, but you got to sustain a consistently great defensive unit. Yes, for all for twenty years, you got to be at least one of the top. Have defenses. It's not one of the top defenses. You know, I and was the fact that Billy. Huh? No, I was gonna say I was kind of upset that uh, you know when uh, Marinelli. I mean, obviously Marinelli left, and I was kind of upset because he, you oh, know, he kind of you know had he had some great personnel there, bro. And like, I it's like I was kind of upset that like I mean, not that upset that he left. I'm, I'm I'm actually glad he left for the Cowboys. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, for the Raiders oh, yeah. because. I'm, I'm, you know what I mean? Because he's going to go over there and fuck their shit up. You know what I mean? But I'm talking right. about... I'm talking about as far as, like, he had all this great personnel. Like, you guys always had one of the, the greatest linebacking cores. Like, you know what I mean? Like, in the past couple of years, yeah. like, yo, he just ran that thing into the ground. And see, what I've grown to understand as far as the Cowboys on defense, uh, Chris Richard, who came from Seattle a couple of years ago, he was the, like, co-defensive coordinator slash secondary coach. Yep. And I think they were, like, in practice discussing, like, uh, some type of cover three that they were trying to – that yeah, but they can, actually weren't – they weren't trying to disguise. Well, we can think the about it. Were like, you, you had uh, Byron Jones who would be who, – who would play well in cover three uh, uh, theoretically, remember? Because he was a great – he yeah, was a great dude you could put on but, an island. But then, you know. The, the problem is with the whole situation – the, the coaching staff, and this is what I say, it goes back to Jerry Jones and just hiring 
any coaches. Or hiring the people you can control. You don't want, yeah, you don't want to hire a stubborn coach, which means, like, if a player says, like, something that could actually be of help, like, um, what was the guy? He came from uh, Cincinnati, uh, George Ioka. Yep. Um, he, he said something about, you know, should I just come down and kind of disguise it, you know? And he got mad and told him to go back to his position. Wow. As a coach, you can't be that stubborn. And Jason Garrett was known for being the same way. You know, like, we're going to run this play. I bet, bet Jason Whatever. Garrett we probably used to wear an. I bet you he wore a lanyard, right? You know, those necklace thingies with the badge. Listen, <laughs> read this. You know what that says? Head coach. What does yours say? Player. Zip it. Right. You know what oh I mean? Like, he, sound, he, I, he always struck me as one of those guys, like, my way or the highway. Or we're stubborn in, in, that, in that sense, like you said. And, you know, the years that Dallas have actually done good under Garrett were, like, um, how would you say, like, uh, the, the best worst case scenario. Yeah, and, yeah we won a division. Yeah, we probably even got a place on line. But we kind of already know we're going to get eliminated regardless of who we play. Because we don't have the type of coach. That yeah, that, that'll open up a new playbook. Even like okay, now we're in the playoffs, so we're gonna we're gonna hit him off guard. You know what I mean? Like no, he, he was like, we we got here doing this. We're gonna continue doing this. You know what I mean? Like remember the Demarco yeah, Murray he, years, Demar Demarco Murray leading rusher. Then the next year Zeke's the leading rusher, and then so he thinks like, well, my system works. You know what I mean? And it's like okay, but then it's what, not your system, bro. You put in you have good players. That's the thing. Once Dallas drafted that line in 2014, we were great. We had building blocks to last us on offense at least five years, if not longer. And in those five years, we could have easily made runs to the Super Bowl, NFC Championship, easily. But without the right coach at the helm to actually make those adjustments and go off of what you see the defense is presenting you instead of actually trying to do something despite whatever the defense has, like, you, you have to be more cerebral. And that's one thing that I can credit McCarthy. He was kind of getting a bit stubborn and stale in Green Bay, which is why he yeah. got fired. Yeah. But with and time, he didn't, he didn't get hired. He took time off. Yeah. And that helped him. Yeah. And right and here, we went straight to New York. I think we're going to see – we're definitely going to see a culture change. I know it's still Kellen Moore. He's still going to be the O.C., but we're definitely going to see a culture change. We're going to see a lot of three wide receiver sets. You know what I'm saying? We're going to see, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and, and, you know, we're going to see a lot more, you know, pass protecting on the line versus like, you know, the run, the run blocking aspect that we're all accustomed to seeing that line. In yeah. You, you're not, you know, you're not going to see a lot of like dual tight end. Um, exactly. One running back, two exactly. tight end, running back, full back, one receiver. It, it's not much of that. Yeah. Like, it's a lot of – no. you kind of seen it last year a lot, but this year we're pushing that more. Yeah. Like, and, and offense, I think, I think no that's problem. why McCarthy became uh, an interesting pickup because it was like, all right, here's a Dallas team that all of a sudden is airing this bitch out. You know what I mean? 4,900 yeah. 4, passing yards versus his regular, you know, 35, 3,600 passing yards. That's a big fucking jump. You know what I mean? And like, yeah, dude, that's like a thousand yards, right? There. Yeah, and think about it. You know, you got someone like Kellen. It's even more, actually. It's like eleven hundo type of shit, twelve hundred. But you look at a motherfucker like Kellen Moore, who was a former quarterback for Dallas, and you know they were, you know, in a in a career year, which was also a contract year for for Prescott. You know, you know, you know, he was on some, bruh. We're gonna get you this money. You know what I mean? And bro, you know, so so the play calling was was more fixated on showing off Dak's arm. You know what I mean? Okay, yeah. so yeah. Can, I, can I ask and you a serious was, question? Huh? Can I ask you a serious question? Because, you know what I'm saying, like, uh, I mean, I know you, 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 you look at things a little differently. Am I crazy thinking that, like, you know, because Dak is black, you know what I mean, they're, they're, they're trying to shaft him, bro? You know what I mean? Like, because it's not like Jerry Jones doesn't play pay black p players, but black quarterbacks historically just seem to have this problem. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, I think with Dak, he's... He, I, I don't think that's it. 
Because I mean, you know, Dak, Dak, has Dak a, is kind of white as far as like he's a frontierman. He chops his own fire. Yeah. Away. You know what I mean? He's a hunter. Right. Like that. That's not common. Yeah. You don't really see black men doing too much like that unless they're from like the South. You know what I mean? And and he is like yeah. from the South, right? Mississippi, I think. Am I, do I got that right? Uh, no, he's from Louisiana. Louisiana. Okay, I knew he's from the South, but yeah, yeah. So he's yeah, like, yeah, he's like Brett Favre and shit, or not Brett Favre. He's like the man. He's like. <laughs> It's weird with that thing because the biggest issue is something small, and that's the years. Reportedly, mm-hmm. Dak is asking for four years. Yeah, because he want because he's and, young uh, enough to want to be able to move on and still, you know what I mean? Yeah, he wants to have that option, yeah. and they Dallas wants to pay him. It's not that we don't think he's a franchise quarterback. No, he showed us that he's worth the money. It's just the technical aspects. I feel like this. Realistically, you if Dallas doesn't sign him, yeah, huh? You think it's the agent kind of like you know he's kind of the agent, pun intended, of destruction right now. Like, you know what I mean? Kind of coordinating this whole thing, like where maybe he's. Is- I think, I think this this situation is different because I think it's like the media maybe blowing it up a bit more. Because yeah. you know the Cowboys, like any any small issue, like this thing about the whole Jason Garrett. Leaving, you know, that whole thing took more uh, of more headlines than actual playoffs. Mm. You know, goddamn, the Patriots got eliminated in the uh, wild card for the first time since '09. Yeah, and they, they talking about Jason Garrett hasn't actually been fired, but hasn't had his closing meet. I'm like, bro, yeah, who cares? I remember that they tried to save so much face for him, and then and then look what he did. A big old fuck you when he signs with the goddamn Giants. It's like, you should have just fired his ass. Because, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, firing somebody, that kind of gives a bad rap on your, on, on your rap, on your, your resume. But it's like when you, you, when, you, when you agree to part ways, you know what I mean? It's like, I don't know, man. But with Dallas, Jerry Jones knew, he knew the truth. And you know a lot of times, man, when you know the truth, it's hard to accept it initially. So yeah. it might take a little minute, but his son, uh, Steven, he kind of helped facilitate that, that changing of uh, head coaches. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Garrett, he in New York, he's actually going to have Daniel Jones better. He's actually going to help him out. Yeah, and Saquon, I mean, like, if I could, I mean, if we can get a Zeke type of year, Zeke type of rookie outing, or even just a Zeke average season, out of, you know, and that mm-hmm. could be Barkley moving forward in fantasy. I love him at that second pick overall because a year ago I was off Barkley because he had such a phenomenal rookie year. I was like, I'm not going to pay a first, uh, you know, first or second overall pick on a guy who I don't think is going to replicate the type of efficiency behind that bad line because and and with Daniel Jones coming in last season, I was like, as soon as he gets an opportunity, he, you know. Zeke, I mean, Zeke, uh, Barkley's not going to be catching all these dump offs because, you know, Eli Manning, he, at least in, in his veteran years, he knew, you know, hey, if, if all if all is not looking well, dump it off to the running back. You know what I mean? Like, and then, so we did see that because, you know, Danny Dimes, he's the type, he's trying to drop some dimes like a goddamn snitch. You know what I'm saying? He's trying to, you know, <laughs> hey, sometimes he'll, he'll fucking run, he'll, he, you know, instead of checking it down, he'll run himself. So. You know what I mean? I think I think uh, Garrett over there, and I think Garrett will be able to really, he'll really really hone in on what he what you know what he wants to do because he's not going to be the head coach. He's just going to be the OC. You know what I mean? Because I think that's yeah. what, that's what he should have just been, unless unless he runs it, unless he's over there solely to run it into the ground and then try to weasel yeah. his way into a head coaching job. <laughs> yep, yep. That, yeah. that's just how just a that's clapping. They call it. They call that pulling the Garrett. Pulling, pulling the Garrett. Garrett. Or is it yep. going we back to... to bro, going back to my cyborg theory, right? What if he says oh. he's really a cyborg and Jerry Jones has sent him over there on a reconnaissance mission and then they're just going to implode that thing from the other side? You know what I'm saying? But it's like, why? That's like sending, you know, troops to, you know, a little hut out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, you will hurt your enemy, but... It's such a small enemy. Like, why, why would you do that instead of... <laughs> I love it. I love that you have eagle. no regard or no res- no respect, no regard for the rest of the dimensions. Like, listen, I mean, it ain't look, shit. the Giants haven't... Okay, even the years that the Giants have won the Super Bowl, 
we yeah. beat them. Like, at least, at least they've been tied up. Like, the Giants haven't swept the Cowboys in a long time. Yeah, long very long time. time. I think I was a kid. <laughs> I mean, and, you know, Eli Manning was a type, too. It was like, you know, they remember they used to always open up in Jerry World on a Sunday night or, you know, the season opener was always like a Monday night or a Sunday night. And, like, Eli Manning was just on this massive streak. Just he would play out of his mind in Jerry World. Do you remember those years? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was like, let me see, 09, uh, 2010 yeah. and 2011. Yep. All the yeah, way until, like, 2014-ish, he, even. You know what I mean? Before, like, they started, yeah, like, he what, started seeing a massive decline in, in the, how he would look oh, when man. he would come to Jerry World. You know what I mean? But, see, once Dallas got the whole line New York, they were, once they lost their defensive line, that was their whole backbone. Yeah, once, yep. once JPP and company were gone, once Snacks, JPP, when, once they were all gone, it was a wrap. Yeah, so once that declined... Over. Um, hey, Washington. Hold on one second. I, I, I just got to close the oh. studio door because there's some people walking outside. Hold on. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, okay. V, C, V, C, S, Z. Go ahead and continue. Okay. Uh, we have... Um, Washington, they, you know, RG3, the 2012 year, great. Uh, Kirk Cousins. It was a blip. Kirk Cousins, the one year, great. Outside of that, not an issue. Yes, you're, you're, you're talking really? about, yeah, the t- 2015, that's right. He, he, that was the one year he got them into the into the postseason. Yeah. Now, Philly, on the other hand, has always been, since I was a child, uh, they ended Michael Irvin's yeah. career. Um, Donovan McNabb, you know, you know what I'm saying? Goddamn. Oh, man, what? Bro, I was like, so glad when Roy Williams kind of, you know, the whole horse collar tackle, he kind of yep. broke T.O.'s leg. <laughs> I, was, I was a little, I was like nine years old when that. He's like, yeah. Like, hey, but happy. shit like that sticks with you forever, though. Yeah. And he, see, that was the year that I think Dallas played uh, the Eagles on Monday night. And then Nav had that crazy play where he like scrambled around or whatever and then yep. the bomb down. I remember that. And we got blew out like forty to ten or something like that. And then I mean Andy Reid, bro. Uh, Andy Reid's legit, man. Yeah. And then even I hated that guy. Even like going to going back to the post Andy Reid years, the you know where they they brought in Chip Kelly. He was a phenomenon for a, for a, for a year. And then, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, for a year. For a year. Because, yeah, because like, yeah, he was there for a few years. But, yes, for that first year, though, he got him into the playoffs, you know what I'm saying, with goddamn Nick Foles even, you know what I mean? And then and then you go ahead and they bring in an Andy Reid predecessor who was there with Andy Reid for those, for the, a, lot, a number of those years. And they bring in Doug Peterson. And, and looking at the yep. NFC East, right, looking at the entire NFC East, bro, the, the one returning factor that that's you know has continuity is the Eagles because everybody else got new head coaches. You know what I'm saying? But then that's the same Eagles who just drafted a quarterback in the second round. Well, you know what, dog? They're 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 preparing for the future, and I think I think that what? was I think what? that was. Well, think about this: Wentz hasn't played 16 games ever. I think he did. I think he finally did last season. Oh no, he did his rookie year too, but. Bro, bro yeah, gets hurt. Year, bro gets hurt. He gets hurt. He does. Yeah. He, even last year, he was hurt at one point. Yeah. I, I don't think he played a full season last year. I think he played like 12 games. I, I Dude, I want to say he played all all the games. He definitely did. Yeah, but but then he got he definitely got hurt in like the first minute in, of, of, the, of the, actually their first oh, possession. Their first possession against the Seahawks in the playoffs. Because McCown ended up playing the whole yep. game. Okay. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my God. And you know what, though? Josh For McCown, real. Josh McCown's been on several, several teams, like over a dozen teams, bro. I might be exaggerating, but he played for the whole fucking league, right? And, like, I feel like yeah. I feel like anywhere he's at, he's like that He's like that, that curse where he's, like, going to get his opportunity. You know what I mean? Because he, he seems to, like, be somewhere and then the, the starter gets hurt. It always happens like that with Josh with with, uh, with Josh McCown, and then boom, we seen old man Josh get into his very first playoff game at the age of forty. He, very, he was he, he didn't even play like the season. He was I think it was like uh, like a PE teacher or something like that, and then he ended up getting that call. 
Yeah, yeah from, the, from the Bears. The I, think. I think it was like from the Bears. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, from, from the Eagles. That's right. Why well, you know, oh, and seeing and seeing that's why they're st- they're done fooling around. That's why they're like, well, let's go get Jalen Hurts. Also because, you know, Dallas was kind of rumored to be looking at Jalen Hurts, and you know how Dallas and Eaton and the Eagles fuck around. They always snake each other and and snipe each other in the draft. Like yeah, Dallas please. Goddard, Dallas Goddard would have been with the with the Dallas Cowboys, but then they traded up in front of the Cowboys, and the Eagles were like, yoink. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, and see, the, and Lamb. Back to, you know, you guys did it this year with CD Lamb. They very well, the uh, Eagles yeah. very well could have been looking at CD Lamb, and they were like, "Nope, That's, sorry, Eagles, yeah. yoink." Because if Jason Garrett was still the coach, the Cowboys would not have drafted CD Lamb. No, with him being available, we not have we would not have gotten we would have gotten uh, the pass rusher out of LSU, who wouldn't have been a bad player, but as far as taking the best player available on the board, that's something that in Dallas we didn't do. Yeah, because, and, and you know, I think th- that was best. That was kind of the approach, though, especially for a Mike McCarthy system that's going to require three badass motherfucking receivers. You know what I'm saying? Three yeah. bad motherfuckers out, you know yep. what I'm saying, on that field. And that's what they needed. They needed to go ahead and add to, to Gallup and add to um to Cooper. And then, and, then, and then guess what? They went ahead and was like, go ahead, young brother. You part of the '88 club now. You know what I'm saying? Oh man, uh, I, 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 I feel weird about that. Well, you know, I think Jerry I, Jones uses that to like hype up. You know what I mean? The, and then you know, and then the you got receiver. yeah, and then you got Mike Michael Irvin, who like you know Mike Irvin, he's forever on one. You know what I mean? He's forever just yeah, you know, he, he's, he's still high maker, from the you know? 1990s cocaine. You know what I mean? But like. He, they got him as the cheerleader for every 88 that comes comes around. You know what I mean? Because normally, uh, any other legendary Hall of Famer fucking receiver would be like, retire my number. But, you know, there's like, no, Mike. Oh, yeah. You're, you're forever a cowboy. And every time we, there's a receiver that we feel is worthy to slap the 88 on and put him in the 88 club, mm-hmm. you're going to be there to fucking, you know, to, to mentor him or, and, and, and hype him up. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and you know, Mike was like, oh, yeah, 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 Uncle, Uncle Jerry. I think there's been one 88 who hasn't been good, and it was a dude, um, he played like early 2000s, late 90s, uh, Antonio Bryant, he, he wasn't all that good. But, uh, yeah, Drew Pearson, Michael Irving, hell, Dez. Dan Bryant, mm-hmm. he uh, got the Cowboys record for most touchdown, re- receiving touchdowns. Throwing up the oh, X. that's a record. Huh? No, I said throwing up that X. Yeah, man, all the time, man. Yeah. Just with Dez, he wasn't as crisp of a loud brother. No, you're and lying. Okay. He, well, he, huh? No, no, no. I was going to say, I mean, I'm, 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 we're, we're going to close this segment up, but I just want to ask you. So, if I was to put you guys at 8-8, eight and eight, same where you guys were last season, you taking the under or the over on this 2020 season? Uh... Over, I'd say we'll be a bit over eight and eight. And you know what, bro? A nine and seven could be well enough to get in that seventh seed. To be honest, this year. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, bro. Seed. Yeah, I mean, and the way that division—if that division is anything like last season—look at the look at the division winner got in that not goddamn nine and seven. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like honestly, if you get ten wins, ten eleven wins, it's like an automatic. You in the NFC East, you get eleven, ten wins, you're yeah, automatic. You're in there. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, well, check this out. So he's taking the over, and that's the bottom line. Let him know, Stone Cold. And that's the bottom line. What? <laughs> what? You son of a bitch! What? <laughs> yes, because he said so. Okay, so now let's get back to this good wrestling, man. I want you to tell All me. Right. I want you to lace me up right now because I'm really not too familiar with what's going on in wrestling. Like you know, like my my, my oldest daughter, she's 12 years old, and you know, like like you know, like a father would, man. I didn't pass it on, and she grew up liking some wrestling. And I, you know, I, I didn't really appreciate the content. Like I remember in early, you know, uh, you know, before the, the WWE got strict, 
and they took everything off YouTube. I used to sit there with her, like she was like a three year old, four year old, and I watched classic matches. You know what I mean? Like, like okay, real quick. One of my favorite matches of all time was the Fatal. It was it was called the Fatal Four Way, Undertaker versus Bret Hart versus Vader versus Stone Cold Steve Austin, right? If you if that, look that one up, incredible match. It was a battle royal style. You had to be thrown over the top rope or pinned or submission. Submission. You know what I mean? And Stone Cold, Stone Cold ended up getting eliminated by th- getting thrown over, but but the referee didn't see it, so he just went on to just corrupt the whole thing. And he ended up eliminating Bret Hart, which led to Survivor Series '96, where Bret Hart and Stone Cold Steve Austin had one of the most epic technical wrestling matches ever. And this was this was the first year that Stone Cold started using the Stone Cold Stunner, and bro, he must have hit. Oh yeah. And, and because before that, he was with the Million Dollar Man, so he would use the Million Dollar Dream, you know, the sleeper like the, you know, it was it was a specific custom sleeper holder, you know what I mean? You yeah, know, you know um, Ring Master Day. Exactly right, but so now he was Stone Cold, and uh, I, hold on one second, my wife is just pulling up, so you might hear a bunch of little noise one time real quick. Things like this can occur uh-huh. in the field. Uh, uh, playmakers, you know what I'm saying? But what we, we what we is gonna do? We're gonna go ahead and just go ahead and hit it off with a little bit of a a Ric Flair montage. Let him know, Rick. Oh no, that's the Stone Cold. Where's where's Rick at? <laughs> I'm gonna go over there and slap your face. I love Ric Flair, bro. Okay, right. let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and hit him off with that one more again. I dressed myself in cashmere. I dressed myself in hundred dollar queen of black. Who made this coat? You go black, my body. You shut up, bro. I am the sixteen time. The sixteen time. The jet flying. Kiss stealing, you know, they Rolex rocking, <laughs> or Rolex wearing, <laughs> all that shit, man. Okay, so now, tell me a little bit about this wrestling that's going on right now, because I, I do understand, like, you know, you, you, they had a, you know, from what I was paying attention to, you had a dude mm-hmm. like, uh, what's the old boy's name, Rain, Ro, Ro, uh, Roman Reigns? Right? Oh, that's my guy. Yeah, that's, and they, that's they, my favorite kind of wrestling. Remember, they kept pushing him so tough to be, you know, that next baby face. You know, I think he's like the Rock's nephew, even. Uh, yeah, cousin. Cousin, right? Yeah, younger cousin. Yeah. And like, it's just crazy how they, you know, the the WWE universe wasn't fucking with him like for years. And yeah. then like, and then like, I mean, I'm not call me crazy, right? Call me crazy, but I tend to believe that. I, like that leukemia. I mean, no one should ever joke about this, and I, I feel like a dickhead even saying this. But am I crazy that Vince McMahon at one point was like, you know what? We're gonna go ahead. We're gonna give you leukemia. You're gonna take a break. So when you come back, you know, you, you, you beat leukemia, and now the world loves you because that's exactly what happened. And I mean, granted, you know, I mean, I hope yeah, they, did, I hope they didn't, happen. I hope they didn't fake that. Because you know, it, it, you know, th- if that's a real story, I love it. You know what I mean? Because I mean, you know, God, you know, Godspeed to anybody who's dealing with you know any kind of terminal illness like that, like a leukemia or a cancer or anything. Like you know, we don't over here at the GMM Network. We're not, we you know, we're not dickheads where we're like you know what I mean. Like we you know we're we're insensitive to shit like that. But I know Vince McMahon. It, you know, he's a, he's a super villain. Is is it, is it out of the question that he would do something like that? Uh, no. Um, no, this is the same Vince McMahon who once pitched the storyline about he uh, possibly impregnating his daughter, Stephanie. Uh, oh, my then, God, I remember that. Yeah, what a dirt, like, dirt in, bag. Instead of the, the storyline, which you probably remember this, of how Stephanie and Triple H got together, and she was, like, drunk or drugged. Yeah, and, yeah, they got yeah, married. and he took her through and, a, a drive through in Vegas, a drive through chapel. And, can you imagine yeah, that? Instead of that happening, 
Imagine that nowadays, bro. Imagine that nowadays. That's like fucking the, uh, oh, the Me Too. Like that. Yeah, the Me Too they're movement would have been on that shit. They would have been like, oh, they're he's... coming with the, such a huge shit. Like they wouldn't have aired no more wrestling for a while, for a long time. Like for real, that would have killed the WWE. Like literally instantly on some Thanos snapping his fingers type stuff. Yo, like. <laughs> for real though. Man, okay, okay, so so what's going on in wrestling right now? Because I'll tell you this much: like my in the past year, my daughter she stopped paying attention to it, and I and it, you know, and it is because of the. She even told me she's like, I just got boring. She's like, it's so boring. The storylines are all the same, and I'm like, you know, because I used to use her as my source, not use her, but she was my source. Like, so tell me what's going on. You know what I mean? Because you know, I wouldn't let her stay up late and watch it, but she would record it and then watch it after school. You know what I mean? Like, and it was mm-hmm. like. You know what I mean? She would just at one point she just fell off and just like I don't I don't like it anymore. It's not it's it's, it's not captivating. You know what I mean? And I'm like, dang, it kind of a little special place in my heart kind of kind of kind of died right there because I was just like, damn, you know? Because if she was into it still, her little sister might have got into it, and and you know my my son who's the youngest out of oh, the yeah. three could have got into it, and it's like you know now they got to discover it on their own because I I mean there is. And, you know, because that's the mighty, I'm like a loyalist, where I stayed loyal to the WWE, you know what I mean? Where it was like, you yeah. know, because there's other brands out there, which I do want you to tell me about next, you know what I'm saying? Because there is other options out there, but how is it looking in the WWE these days, in your opinion? Um, I, I'm not going to say it's looking horrible, uh, but, you know, there have been better eras and better times. Um, currently... Uh, due to the global situation uh, that has kind of like shook WWE a bit, they don't they, the shows that they've been doing for the past two months, yeah. uh, including WrestleMania, which no, happened um, last month, which was actually the first WrestleMania to have to be broadcasted two separate nights. Like it was uh, broadcasted Saturday night, and then the second part of it was broadcasted Sunday night. Yeah, but that's also, um, that's also part that's also partly Vince McMahon being a genius, knowing that like people are in quarantine, they'll tune in. So let's go ahead and get two different nights, two different. St- and then if you have WWE Network, you're gonna be able to watch it. But like, did, did, so now, did, did answer me: Did he do two different pay per view events? Was it, did, or did you pay for it? And you get it both nights. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you pay for it, or if you got the network, it was available both nights. Okay. Um, but to, to to what you just said, the what you what you literally just said, why he's a genius, is true. Because, well, actually, it, he wasn't the first person to come up with that idea. That actually came from uh, recently New Japan wrestling. Oh, they that's have right. New Japan's kind of tight, events man. like the G1 Climax tournament and other uh, major pay per views over multiple nights. Oh. Um, so it, it's not a new idea, uh, but yeah, it was one that he desperately needed. So um, it's actually no crowd, you know. Uh, well, actually, this past Raw was the first um, WWE event that actually had some type of audience in it in the past, like, two and a half months or was so. It, was it held in, uh, in Florida? Yeah, yeah, all the events... Everything, pay per view, um, pay per views, Raw SmackDown, NXT has been at the WWE Performance yeah, well, Center. Well, because yeah, because and that's in Florida. Yeah. Okay, so so let remember uh, you had texted me at one point, right? When you know we scheduled this thing a couple weeks back, and you text me, you're like, "Are you familiar with NXT?" The only the only familiarity I have with it is because I actually listened to the Stone Cold Steve Austin podcast, right? And, you know, he's brought, mm-hmm. he's brought on Triple H and they would talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I know Triple H is kind of the one who spearheaded that whole NXT movement. You know what I mean? Like, behind the yeah. scenes, at least, right? But hold on. Let, 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 let me get one more Stone Cold drop in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. What? And that's the bottom line. Why? Because all Stone Cold said so. Thank you very much. You yes, son of a bitch. And what? And that's the bottom line. Because <laughs> Stone Cold said so. I love that drop. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to find hella ways to just drop that, but I was like, that one was just like, no, let's just go ahead and give him a drop. But yeah, I, I so I listened to Stone Cold Steve Austin's podcast. I think it's funny as hell. You know what I mean? That's, that's your fellow Texas boy. 
You know what I'm saying? Texas, oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Texas motherfuckers got to stick together, like you said. And uh, mm-hmm. But, yeah, so, like, tell me about the NXT, man, because I know the NXT is, like, they're, they're, they got that indie feel. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what um, makes it special, uh, apart from Raw and SmackDown. It has a more smaller, intimate feel. Like, they normally held NXT and at Full Sail University, which that little... Uh, at Full Sail? Then, you know, my, my, you know, my, you know, a lot of the sound engineers that I work with, because like I said, I make music, a lot of them went to Full Sail. I didn't know they had a fucking... Uh, they had a goddamn uh, like you know like uh, cow power. What is it like a like a not yeah, so much a, stadium. Yeah, it's a campus. Yeah, they yeah, got it's not. Wow. It's like a small like. It really is. I've been there. Arena. I've been there. It's kind of like a yeah. like a po- like a. I'm trying to think of the word that's like a smaller version. It's like bigger than the theater, and it's, it's way smaller than the fucking stadium. Obviously, uh, over here we, yeah. they would call it like you know we have something like that. It's called like a pavilion. You know what I'm saying, but like yeah, something something like that that might hold like at the most two thousand people. Yeah, maybe not even that. Many. Kind of yeah, I was gonna say maybe like a fifteen hundred type. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like how WCW used to be in the nineties. They would have these smaller little venues. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Exactly. That's what, and that's I'm gonna get to this a little later. But that's what AEW does as well. Oh. Like their their arenas aren't like um, you know. The regular basketball yeah, arena. 60,000, 50,000 yeah, type of, it's yeah. It's something small, intimate, and, like, they use, um, Cody Rhodes is, they, uh, have a deal with Shad Khan, the owner of the Jaguars. Yeah. Um, which, you know, means they have money. So, yeah. uh, you know what they, damn, you know actually, what one of the more from? interesting things I think you should check out mm. is the stadium stampede match. Just search it up. And it recently, it just happened last uh, Saturday. Okay. And you were talking about the Jaguars. Shoot me some links. Shoot me some links, uh, CSV. Will do. Yeah, I'll check it out. The only thing I would say, the Jaguars, every home game, has never been uh, as fun as the stadium Stampede match was. Wow. And it includes an old head named Chris Jericho, too. And you know what, though? Jericho going over there. See, Jericho, he's a journeyman, bro. Like, he, he's a, he's a oh, Canadian, yeah. and him and Lance Storm, they were down there as cru, cru, uh, cru, cruiserweights and, you know, in, in, in South Wrestling, like, you know, when it was regional. And then, like, mm-hmm. he, he parlayed that into getting into WCW, which essentially parlayed that into him getting into the WWF. You know what I'm saying? Y2J, you know what I'm saying? Raw is Jericho type of shit. And then, bro, yep. like, so for him jumping to AE, AEW doesn't surprise me because he's a journeyman, you know what I mean? And he goes, he always moves to where the attention's at. Because you got to remember, when Jericho was with the WCW, they had those were the days that NWO was popping. Like, it was the place to be. And then where, 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 you know, like Vince McMahon had to start kind of copying what they were doing, you know what I mean? Like, Yeah, but the, it was funny that the NWO taking over WCW, it was more successful for things outside of WCW than it was for WCW, you know, because the NWO taking over, like, quote-unquote taking over WCW, which they did because, like, a lot of the main matches, titles, uh, yeah, it was, all, it was all held TV, by NWO, yeah. Yeah, and so that ended up having, you know, Chris Jericho, uh, Chris Benoit, Eddie Guerrero, um, Rey Mysterio, Dean Malenko, Lance Thorne, you know, all yep, down All the list. cruisers, yep. Hell, even Triple H, The Undertaker, Stone Cold, even though it wasn't the WC, it wasn't the NWO at that time, they all wore WCW talent that left. You're right, to bro. Come to That's the a WWE. good fucking point. So, they, WCW had so much talent. Like, it's a lot of wrestlers. Even if they didn't have a long run, they had some type of run in WCW. You know, that's the big show, too. You know? Wow, yeah, it's the yeah, big I show. That goddamn giant. <laughs> yeah. He really was, well, though. Do you remember the Mark Henry, uh, the holy shit moment? The Mark Henry... 
uh, uh, a big show super flex off the top row super plex off the top rope and, oh yeah and they, they made it where all the all the ring posts collapsed that shit was fucking yep. awesome yep it was we they had the Brock Lesnar versus Big Show one from like 03 oh yeah that was the first time they did it that was oh yeah that shit was Oh, was that the one when they collapsed the the the, the ring post? Yeah, that was the okay, first so, one, and then yeah, okay, that's later, right. Mark Henry and the Big Show did it. And yeah, 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 because it was a hit. That was mm-hmm. hit visually fucking awesome, bro. Okay, well, oh, so mm-hmm. where do where do you think where do you think the direction of wrestling is going right now? Obviously, you have NXT, and I'm talking about wrestling as a whole. You know what I mean, you have NXT, you have AEW, you have New Japan, like. You have a, 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 a T. Is TNA still in existence? Yeah, Impact. They're they uh. They're they're, they're, they're like they're third place to, right now, huh? They're like in mean third place for sure. Well, I wouldn't even say it, it, they're getting back. It just like it goes back to the football thing. If you don't have the right people at at the head of the operation, the oh, operation yeah. won't they last. Got that broad. Won't, they got yeah, that broad. They got that broad. Yeah. Whatever her name is, so she they, runs that shit. They, I think, sometime last year, they, uh, you know, they had some new, head, you know, people at the head of it. So things are kind of turning around. But with the global pandemic, it does put a, a, a limit on things. As far as WWE and AEW, I think they're doing well, and they're probably going to be including. You know, NV companies, they're probably going to be, like, the only two, like, Big entities. thriving wrestling companies for yeah. a while. Because a lot of indie shows have canceled. Um, and you only have those two companies that can that have TV deals, for one, uh, and also have enough money and enough influence uh, to get, you know, buildings. You know, the NXT... Um, Full Sail or the Performance Center for WWE or they have the um, the Daily's Place in Jacksonville for AEW that they can always, you know, have a show with. Yeah. So it's, um, I think in the world of professional wrestling, it's pretty good. Uh, besides the fact we just had some deaths last year. Um, R.P. Shad Gaspard. Yeah, man, and, that's um, the piece. The... There's another uh, Asian lady, uh, Kamora, I forgot her yep. first name. I think that was her name. But she died as well, so RIP to both of those people. Um, but I think wrestling is heading in a good direction. It's kind of just stagnant a, a little bit right now. Not from the product, but just from, you know. Yeah, from the, from, from the, from the, situ- the circumstances that we're all living, we're all living in as, mm-hmm. as, as, a, as a planet. Um, but things to look out for, um, the, for the first show for each company where they can actually have, like, fans in the audience, whether it's, you know, half capacity, everybody spread out, or what, you know, but, because I think that makes a huge difference. Yeah, I mean, Um, and, and because it is, it is, it is a, like an elaborate dance, where it's like, you know, the partners in the dance are, you know, tell, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to Irish whip you right here. I'm going to, you know what I mean? I'm going to, you know, and then yeah. without the crowd noise, you can hear that shit. And it's like, it it, it breaks kayfabe. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, not yeah, breaks can, kayfabe. Can, it, 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 it shows kayfabe. You know what I mean? Yeah, because we all know, like. Okay, yeah, but yeah, you want to hide it as much possible. Yeah, you don't want to be obvious. You know, but uh, they... That's, that's the only thing. Like, once fans be able to get back into, like, uh, as far as, like, seeing shows, that will add a bit more, like, a, a fire underneath it, you know? Yeah. Because it's, it's going good, and they have wrestlers in the audience, like, other wrestlers in the audience, which is cool, because it gives, like, it's not just empty, you know? But yeah. ha- not having a wrestler, having legit fans, it is... It, it will create that yeah that missing thing you know and like you said it's, it is a dance and the music that's being played is the fans yeah and that's what you go off of yeah 
And that music is that sweet crowd noise. You know what I mean? Like if you if yes. you li- if you listen to any, you know, like I said, I listen to Stone Cold Steve Austin's podcast and like my favorite thing to do is like go and, you know, listen to interviews when he would talk with Scott Hall or talk with, you know, Triple H or, you know, you know, all the greats where they would talk about, you know, the high, like, you know, the adrenaline from, from the crowd going crazy when like, you know what I mean? When you pull off a good move or like, you know, you, you, you pull off a match and like, you know what I mean? Those people are going to go home remembering this shit for life. You know what I mean? But, uh, yeah. okay, check this out. This is we're gonna go into this last segment, you know what I'm saying? Okay. You know, you know, like my girl. Remember, I told you she had pulled up. I'm gonna run these groceries up real quick, but I want you to, I want you to just go through some of your greatest memories of, of, of wrestling, whether it was live or whether it, you, because I know you sent me some footage. You know, what was that? A tables, ladders, chairs match or something? Oh no, that was um, I think if I'm not mistaken, that was just a, a six man tag team match. Yeah, but that was that was that was nuts. You know what I mean? But yeah, yeah so- it got it got out of hand because the money in the bank was coming up. Oh, that's and, right. And like the participants in the match were each on team, so you kind of know how those matches get out of hand, like right before the uh, the pay per view. Yeah. Okay. So so l- go ahead and let me know. I'm gonna run these groceries up real quick. I'm gonna be back in like thirty seconds. Okay. Let's see. Oh uh, man, playmakers out there. Some of my favorite memories of the square circle. Um. Seeing uh, seeing Booker T getting beat up in the grocery store like that's funny as hell. Even though it didn't happen in the in in the mat, I mean in the ring. Um, every Jeff Hardy died from a ladder. Um, those have been nice. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Um, seeing Rey Mysterio debut in 2002 that was pretty damn cool. Um, actually just watching SmackDown from 2002, 2003, 2004, and middle of 05. Those years were pretty, like, every time I watch SmackDown, it would be a good match, you know? And you can even go back and look now at a lot of those matches. In a Guerrero vs. A, Street Fight, um, Brock Lesnar vs. Kurt Angle, uh, the Iron Man. That one was dope! The Kurt Angle oh, Brock Lesnar. When when he when he, when Kurt when when Brock Lesnar he went for the gusto. This fucked him up for a while too. Remember he does he did he does the shooting star press, and he oh, fucking yeah. fucks his oh, his man. neck up. Whoa! But <laughs> hey, bro, for the fans that got to see that, that was one of those ones, bro, that I pulled up on YouTube to show my daughter when she was a wee. Yeah, type. Man, I was like, cool. you gotta watch this one, baby. You know what I mean? That one, cause cause it's two guys who have a legit wrestling background. And you know they're suplex masters. Like, bro, Brock Lesnar can sneeze and you'll suplex and he'll suplex you. You know what I mean? Like, he was just one of those. He could do a standing belly to belly and just throw your ass. You know what I mean? Like, and then you had, yeah, yeah and then you had Kurt Angle who just like, what, bro? I I'm low key. Kurt Angle was one of my. He's my one of my top tens. Just because he, is. he has to be man. Yeah, bro. Just because like he was just incredible, bro. Like you know the I love suplexes. I love them, you know what, you know, and, and, and I love them coming from all different angles, you know what I mean? And like, bro, and you yeah. know, pun intended, Kurt Angle, bro, he was dope, man. And that match was incredible. I agree. I don't know if you knew this or not, but he won a gold medal with a broken freaking neck. Yeah, with a broken freaking neck. And like, yeah, if you look at Kurt it, Angle, like you know, back then, the, the, the you know what they would do is they would, if you had a broken a broken like vertebrae, they would fuse the, the you know the the the, the, the vertebrae together. So he can't even necessarily turn his head left or right because he has those big old neck yeah. muscles, and that's just something yeah, that's, that's going to be for you know something he has to deal with for life. Matter of fact, it even got him into using a lot of drugs, like because he was a clean cut guy, you know, a straight edge. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. And then, and then you know when he went to TNA, he really got into drugs, bro. Like you know because all the youngsters were popping salmas and and muscle relaxers and and, and all kind of different opiates, bro. You know what I mean? And I- and I think for some some of the performers, it's pride because they don't want to tell their employer, "Look, I need like a couple of weeks off. My yeah, neck is tired. I don't want to start." Well, because the, the business is cutthroat. Like if you're not out yeah, there performing, you're, you're that's the why next man a up. lot of wrestlers say they don't want to leave or they don't want to take time off because they don't want to lose their spot. 
Because if you lose your spot, that could be your whole career. Back in the 90s, right, bro? If you got hurt? Yeah. If you got hurt legit, like, you know, torn, like a Triple H or something, torn ACL or like, you know, you know, real significant injuries, there would be like, he's on sabbatical. You know what I mean? Like, he's yeah. taking extended time off. Because, you know, because they try to keep kayfabe. You know what I mean? They, they try to hold kayfabe. You know what I'm saying? Where it is, yeah. it is interesting, though, nowadays that, 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 that the fan base, they're aware of kayfabe. You know what I mean? You know, because, you know, you have, yeah. res- you have wrestlers that are on Twitter. You have wrestlers that are, you know what I mean? On social media and shit like that. Like, where it's like, you know what I mean? Like, there's, there, you know, the, 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 the days of, like, circus wrestling where, like, you know, they would go town to town and then, you know, the, the, the spectators would think it's real to a degree. You know what I mean? That's yeah. long gone. You know what I mean? Now it's, it's an art form and it's truest oh, yeah. form. It's, it's an elaborate yeah. ballet. Like, my dad used to clown when I was a kid. You know what I mean? Yeah, actually, you should you should thank uh, Vince McMahon's dad for for stopping all of that because he started like the um, uh, I guess you could say the monopoly of the 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 circus you know wrestling yeah. you know going yeah, like from the town Chitlin, to town. which you which you would pr- probably call like the Chitlin Circuit, but it was wrestling. Yeah, yeah, exactly, bro. And then check this out, bro. Vince McMahon. McMahon oh, no, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but Vince McMahon Jr., the Vince McMahon we know, not Vince McMahon Sr., but Vince McMahon that we oh. know, Vincent J., yeah. his greatest move was go, going ahead and going on to goddamn Canada and and talking to Stu Hart, and he bought out Stu Hart and Stampede Wrestling and took over that whole te- that whole television territory. And then because my yep. favorite my favorite wrestler growing up was the Hitman Hart, and you know he said like this he says, "I'll do the deal with you, Vince, but under one stipulation, you gotta bring you gotta bring on board my sons, and my, you know my 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 son in law, you know what I'm saying." And so he brought them oh, all on over, you know what I mean? I need a whole damn heart on these. Yeah, <laughs> and you know what too, Rowdy Piper, you know Rowdy Piper is not even Scottish. He's actually. One of the cousins of the Hart family, but that was just his gimmick. You know what I mean? Being this yeah. fucking Scottish man, this Scottish lad that was a fucking, you know, just fired up all the time. But he was just a crazy Canadian. You know what I mean? And he was actually yeah. related to Bret Hart and them for real. You know what I mean? Like, so it was like he took the whole fam and like, and like you know when they went from that that you know that that um, slower type of you know brawling type of wrestling with these, you know, Hulk Hogan's of the world and, you know, Andre the Giant. And then when they got into the yeah. 90s, you know, they started pushing the, you know, you know, the Bret Hart's of the world and the... So, can I ask you a question? Okay, what well, bust it. Do you think, do you think that uh, Stampede Wrestling purchase was better than um, he giving the, uh, the wrestling territory where Hulk Hogan was? I, I and, yeah, I mean, well, you mean you mean you mean prior to Stampede, you mean, you mean the, the wrestling territory to, territory to get Hulk Hogan? Yeah, I forgot. I forgot exactly where. I, yeah, well, but, but I think that was territory. that was. But see, I'm I'm talking about Vince McMahon that we know because I think that was his pops that did that. You know what I mean? Oh no 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 no! Because oh, McMahon his pops did, had died he, already. Yeah, his his dad also was named Vince McMahon, but I think he was like Vincent J McMahon. And the one that we know is like Vincent K. McMahon. Oh, I thought, oh, I Kennedy his, McMahon, that's right. Yeah, I think his dad may he, have did the same P thing, but... No, 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 I, no, no. I, I had it fucked up. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, 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 C-S of Z. I fucked that up. I, I meant Vince McMahon, the one we know of. He's the one who, who purchased the Stampede. You know what yeah, mean? and yeah. he got Hogan and... Um, Damn, it's another guy. Cause Hogan, another guy. There's like, nice like Steamboat Ricky. Oh no, not oh you my rivalry with, with Hulk Hogan. Um, damn, I know who you're talking about. Uh, I can't remember. He was another kind of big dude. He wasn't quite as big as Hogan, but he was really. Yeah, really but he big. was one of uh, one of Hogan's uh, heels. Damn, man. I know, man. I'm. You know what? I've, you know, I've been sitting here. I've had like you know several beers and a couple shots, so. Uh, it's kind of hard for me to remember right now, but but yeah, only thing I can say is 
McMahon told him when they were buying the territory, look, I need, I'm going to get you, Hogan. And Hogan told him he needed this other dude because they had yeah, they chemistry. Yeah, they had chemistry, and, exactly. Yep, and that was like the first main rivalry for Hogan in the WWWF. Because they had like three W's. Yep, WWW, yep. And then uh, next thing you know, something called WrestleMania came around. Yeah. Mr. T, then a couple years later, Hogan versus Andre. And now you got the spectacle. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, yeah. Hey, bro, okay. So now, actually, I was lying. This is not the, that was not the last segment. This is the last segment. Let's just go through some of our favorite wrestlers, man. Go ahead, hit me off with some of your favorite wrestlers, man. It doesn't even matter the era. I, you know, I'm, I'm just interested to know, man. Era? Okay. Um, it it well, doesn't matter about the era. I just want to know. Like, oh, it doesn't matter. Okay. No, it doesn't matter. Uh, I just want to know your favorite wrestlers just off top. I can give you, like, about seven. Let's go Bret Hart. Nice. Stone Cold. Nice. Uh, The Rock. Woo! Mm. I love The Rock, dude. The Rock was great. I'd say as far as technical styles. Check this uh, out. You want to know something real cool, real quick side note? When I graduated the eighth grade, right? You know, I had, mm-hmm. I, had I, I went to a, a, I went to this school called Quimby Oak. And there was this other school, one of our rival schools was a late, was a Leva, Leva uh, Middle School. And I, I had a cousin that went there. So I went to their graduation and The Rock was there because his nephew was graduating from that school. And like, oh wow. yeah, he had like a team of fucking bodyguards. No one can get around him, but it was fucking epic. It was like, wow. Like, like, cause that was, that was one of the first times. I had seen The Rock in person, and and and, and also a- after this segment, I-, I will tell you some of my favorite wrestling moments as well, well wrestling memories. Okay. Because I didn't get to t- say my part yet, but yeah. So go, go on. Who else? Who else is some of the faves on the C S Z's list? Right. Um, oh, gotta show love to the Undertaker. I mean, oh, yeah. Undertaker and Sting. I love that two. you go. Oh, and Sting. Oh, the icon. One of the icons, because I know I know Rowdy Piper called himself the icon at one point too. But bro, I I love that you're you have an old soul, bro. Yeah, I, 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 I'm forgetting that you started at four, at the, the wee age of four years old, bro. Yeah, and like I said, like um, like a, a lot of wrestling, I looked up when YouTube first started, like uh, 2007, yep. 2008. Yeah, and that's when so that's when YouTube was the wild years. west. They had everything on YouTube during those days, yep. Yeah. Um, like, a couple of my current favorites, um, I love AJ Styles. He's oh, AJ beast. Styles is a legend in his own right. How deep is he in the game? Like 15, 16 years, 17 years oh, now? Man. Uh, close to 20, man. Yeah, yeah, because he was the he was the guy who put TNA on his back. He was the TNA hey, shining that, star. He was, he was my favorite. I keep it. 100, bro. I literally had bought a TNA ring, and I did get an AJ Styles action, action figure. figure. Like, yes. In fifth grade, bro. When he nice. was in TNA. And so whenever he made his debut in WWE, it was just mind blowing. That's I, something that I thought he never would see. I loved putting him in the category as a, a Rob Van Dam, like being the guy who represented, who was like the face of ECW. And like, and it, yeah. and it, and it, it was fitting that they, they, they pinned them against each other when, 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 uh, when they finally were in the same organization together. You know what I mean? Yes, man. Uh, well, I guess my last favorite one. Um, well, I, I love a lot of wrestlers, but, well, the last two. And they're kind of old. One is Chris Jericho, and the other one is Daniel Bryan. I lo- okay, listen, I love Daniel Bryan, too, because he's a hell of a story. And he was just like, he was yeah. also just a, he was a great, like, you got to have mic skills. You got to have promo skills, bro. And, like, he can cut a hell of a promo. And, like, you know what I mean? Like, Daniel Bryan, I mean, obviously he had that CTE issue as well. You know what I mean? And, and matter, matter yeah. of fact, correct me if I'm wrong, it's, it's him and Cody Rhodes, right, who are responsible for AEW? Uh, uh well, Cody Rhodes and the, um, the rest of the elite who consists of the uh, the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. That's like what it is. I'm sorry. Four, That's what like, it is. I think founding members 
of the A of AEW. But but Daniel Bryan did did he, he did have something to do with it though, right? Am I am I wrong about that? Oh no 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 Daniel Bryan he's still in WWE. Oh okay, so I was totally off on that one. Okay, I'm, I apologize yeah. to the playmakers. You know what I mean? Oh no, no problem. Um, now Jericho he didn't have anything to do with it, but he was the first big name like, to cross over. Yeah, he was like you know. If we start this up, okay, this is a list of guys who's going to bring in at the top of the list, you know, him. So, Jericho and Daniel Bryan, like, Jericho really, you know, now people are starting to look up and realize he's been wrestling since, like, 88. So, he's been going, he's been wrestling longer than probably... He's the OG of 40%, it. Yeah, 40% of the roster has been alive. And... Hell of a podcast as well. I am a fan of, oh, the, of, of Chris Jericho's podcast. And one of the best podcasts yeah, guys you know, ever. Podcasting is he, Jericho. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh my god. Bro. Yeah, this whole I love I love old Jericho when he was a cruiserweight. Cause like the lion the lion uh, the, the the walls the the walls of Jericho used to be called the Lion Tamer. And like yep. he would legit be standing it was like a standing Boston Crab and he would drive the knee into the back and then bend you on your neck and that shit was just fucking awesome to me as a child and then it kind of upset me when he got to the WWE or WWF and as it started to progress where like it the the, the walls of Jericho essentially was like a weak version of the Boston Crab and it kind of made me mad but cause be, be, be only, yeah. only because I was used to the intense look of, and feel of, of the lion's tamer. You know what I mean? Where he was standing, bending you on your neck, driving that knee into the lower back, and just uh, tap out, motherfucker. Yeah, because he was like, you know, he was like, actually, he was barely like, tilt you around to where like, your face is barely, yep. you know, your forehead is barely on the mat. Yeah. But yeah, it is on the mat enough to bend your damn neck, which is talking about it kind of hurts. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> For real. Damn. But, yeah, I think they changed it, you know, to to be more suitable. Because Vincent, man, he, he does have, like, a weird... He, the guy's a weird... Yeah, he, he has a weird way of, like, wanting to own somebody. Like, kind of wanting to own somebody, too, in control. Where it's like, you know what? You know what, Chris? We're going to go ahead and, uh, you know, we're going to, you know, we're, we're wanting to look more like a Boston Crab. You know what I mean? Like, we're like he, you know, he 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 like he likes to put his two cents into kind of, you know, what I mean, control said individuals. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, and I get it. It's his product, and at the end of the day, he's the guy that a lot of people have to answer to. Yeah. But man, you know, in in some ways, you can do more harm than good. And you've done a lot of good. Like, you made a lot of good decisions, but made equally as much harmful or questionable decisions. Yeah. No, you ain't so lying. It, okay, I guess well, that's just, you know, the Garrett disease mutated. Ah! <laughs> uh, okay, well, check this out. I'm, I want to run through some of my greatest wrestling memories, right? So, I want right. to take you to a time... Like I'm from I'm from a place called San Jose, California. I'm I'm from where the Sharks play. I'm I'm South Bay Area. You know what I'm saying? They have a football team out there. Uh, yeah, the Sabercats. Well, we had the Sabercats. The, oh, I was yeah. talking about the uh, what is it? The the Spartans? Yeah, yeah, playing yeah, the yeah, West, yeah exactly. Right? It's at San Jose State. State. Exactly. Yep, San Jose State. Yep. You know what I'm saying? James uh, uh, James Jones played there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Man, we had a ton of we had a ton of NFL players come out of San Jose State. You know what I mean? Spartans. You know, shout out to the Spartans. But check this out. So, so there was this one. There was this one. Uh, remember where I was? Ta- I actually kind of touched on. Okay, so first of all, my favorite era in wrestling was the Attitude Era, but my second favorite okay. was the Invasion Era, when they started meshing. Yeah. You know, the, you know, the bringing in Booker T, bringing in all the different titles from WCW. You know what I'm saying? And and, and, and and now you started to see all these dream matches. Because we used to be like, yeah. yo, it would be so cool if, like, The Rock would fight, you know, uh, or wrestle against, you know, Booker T. Because Booker T clearly was ripping off The Rock bottom with the bookend. You know what I mean? Like, you know, where it was like, 
I, you know, I loved the idea of them meshing, meshing, you know, the ECW, WCW, and WWF all together in one. It, it made for great storylines. I fucking love that era. This is when I was like, you know, a uh, freshman, sophomore, uh, into my junior year. This was kind of that era. Because this was the last, I, I point this out because this was the last era where I kind of, I kind of fell off being a religious wrestling watcher. You know what I mean? Before I was religious on it, like every, I'm, I'm not missing any SmackDown. I'm not missing any, any uh, 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 Monday Night Raw. You know what I mean? Like, where it was like, I'm yeah. switching back from Monday Night Football and Raw, or I got it picture in picture type of shit. You know what I mean? Where it was like, you know, mm-hmm. but, 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 um, I say this to say, there was a, there was a, uh, there was a pay per view event called Vengeance. WWF Vengeance. Oh. And this is when they, yeah. this is when Chris Jericho, you know, they had the whole storyline where not where uh, you know Stone Cold was the WWF champion, and then The Rock was the world champion, and then they had this tournament style where it was you know The Rock versus uh, Jericho, Jericho beats him, you know the, the Stone Cold versus Kurt Angle, Stone Cold beats him, and then they. They they fight to be to make the undisputed champion. And remember that time when Jericho had both titles, because Jericho ends yeah. up winning it all. But like so, that was a, obviously a Sunday nighter, because that's when the pay per views yeah. were. So they had a Saturday night event which was untelevised, and it was at the Shark the Shark Tank Arena. You know what I'm saying? It was over at the Shark Tank, and I so I oh, went okay. I went to this event. You know we were like fifth row. But we, we, you know, we we had seen these empty seats, so me and my boy, we, you know, you know, we found ourselves in the front fucking row, right? And I remember talking so much shit, standing on my chair. First of all, I'm an advocate of marijuana, and at the time, I was probably like 16 years old. I was high out of my fucking mind. See, I was a youngster smoking weed, and me and my boy, we were higher than a motherfucker. Obviously, we couldn't afford to buy. We weren't old enough to buy drinks. So, you know, and the intermission, oh yeah, so we got high, went in that motherfucker, in, during intermission, we went to the smoking section, smoked a blunt, you know what I'm saying, so now we're back, and we're talking a bunch of shit to these wrestlers, bro, and I remember, it was Edge and Christian in a match, right, uh, they, were, they, were, they were facing the Dudley brothers, the, 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 the Dudleys, right, and I, yeah. I just remember, yeah. I remember just talking so much shit, yelling out, fuck Canada, Fuck Canada! Just you know, just trolling. You know, even though I love Canada, I was just trolling because I wanted you know I was on I wanted the Dudleys to whoop that ass. And I remember, I remember Edge. I mean Edge, he gets tagged in by Christian, and then Christian's going through the ropes to stand on the on the, on the apron, and he looks back at me and he says, "Shut up!" And I was like, "Oh shit!" He told me to shut up. I was so fucking happy that I got a reaction out of this guy. And, or like, okay, then, then uh, you know, obviously the pay-per-view was the next night. So, so in this case, they had Stone Cold and The Rock versus Jericho and Angle. So it's the champions holding the titles versus, you know, and, and it was, uh, and uh, The Rock and Stone Cold, they ended up being the victors. And The Rock, he's walking out of the, he's walking down the aisle, you know, at, you know, and then Stone Cold gets on the mic. He goes, he goes, you guys want to see Stone Cold and The Rock have some beers? What? I said, you want to see the Stone Cold and The Rock have some beers? What? And, and I said, you want to see the Stone Cold and The Rock have some beers? What? And then the Stone, you know, The Rock, you know, he he go he goes back to the ring, and you know, so he got you got Stone Cold on one corner post, you you got The Rock on the other. You know, and the rocks flinging the belt in the air, and then you know you, you got you know the you know Stone Cold he's he's signaling the bell the bell ringer to throw them beers. You know what I mean? And they're just clanking beers, doing the whole chug, and it was just fucking epic. I was so close that beer was splashing on me, and I was just like, Damn. it was one of the greatest me- memories in my life, bro. Like, cause it was like, bro, here's two of my favorites, and they're you know what I mean, two two baby face heels. And they're drinking some good old cold ones together. And that was just one of my greatest memories, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, that sounds damn good, man. And, you know, it was an untelevised event. You know what I mean? Because it was a, obviously a night before. Uh, and I, I think uh, yeah. they, I think that, that, that the Vengeance event was in Anaheim, California. 
what I'm saying? So that was in, in Southern California. You know, I'm up, in, I'm up in Northern California, but like, it was incredible, man. I remember even a side note, telling a, a Bubba Ray Dudley, tagging, tagging Devon, tagging Devon. And he tags him in and he goes, I was already gonna do it, bro. And I'm like, yeah, like just being able to interact with these wrestlers, it was just, it, man, it was, it was just great to me, man. And then, and then, yeah, you know, yeah. I'll go ahead and I'll fire off some of my favorites, man. Oh, um, just real quick. Go ahead. Go um, ahead. We, we've been on the phone for like almost two hours. My yeah. phone is does dumb crap, so yeah. if it hangs up. No, no, like, okay. Well, you know what though? Like you know what though? Look, look, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and sew this thing up, and I, I'll get you up out of here, because I, I definitely don't want okay. you know. So, so go, go ahead one more time. Go ahead and let the playmakers know. Where to find you? All your social medias. Where to find your podcast? Go ahead and plug that one time. Okay, this is DCSV here, and you can find my podcast again on Anchor FM or Stitcher Radio or Google Podcasts or Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Anywhere where you can find podcasts at, you can find my podcast at. Yeah, um, my brother. I'm soon to be on YouTube. I want to be doing my um, wrestling. Uh, it's more of a, it's a wrestling podcast, but more of an insider. And also, uh, I do have some gaming things I do post uh, on Twitter. I do have a Jacksonville Jaguars Twitter of the GOAT franchise. Like, um, yeah, one of your guests before, VO the GOAT, yeah. we're in the same, like, Mad League together, so. Nice! Kinda, Look at that! Yeah, that's kind of our little connection, in a way. Bro, I'm about to, as soon as we get off this, I'm about to hit up my man Vinny, man. Shout out to, <laughs> shout out to the GOAT, man. That's awesome. That's you're that's right, because I do see you posting that and shit. You're right. That You're in the GOAT League. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. So you're good, I'm bro. with Jaguars trying to make it three and nine. <laughs> so you're, you're good, man. Hey, hey, I am a Gardner Minshew truther, man. I'm a fucking truther, bro. I'm actually excited bro. that Jay Gruden's there. I feel like Minshew's going to throw for like 4,000 minimum. You know what I mean? Because Gruden mm-hmm. loves to throw that rock. Okay, so, so it's, all right, so, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll try to fire some of these off, you know, as quick as I can. Love the Macho Man. I'll go through eras. When it comes to the old school era, love the Macho Man. Oh, yeah. The Macho oh, Man. Boy. Love him. Love the madness. You know what I'm saying? Madness snapping to a Slim Jim. Yeah, I love it. I've, I love Slim Jims because of him. I was just, anytime I used to go to the <laughs> liquor store, if I went to the liquor store and I buy a blunt, and that shit is a dollar twenty-five. Them, them seventy-five mm-hmm. cents. I'm buying three Slim Jims. You know what I mean? The minis. Yeah, they were that cheap. Yeah, they, they used to be twenty-five cents a piece back in the days. The small, the minis. Wow. Yeah, man. I used to have. Oh, a, oh yeah. I, I would have like a fucking, bro. You know, I, I'm a pothead, bro. So, you know what I mean? Like Slim Jims was just the key. You know what I mean? Slim Jims and Funyuns, bro. Dial it up. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But yeah, so love, love Macho Man. Hated Hulk Hogan. Hated how he was just, he was just so and like, like whack. Like, come on, the leg drop. Love macho man, they do not like Hogan. Yeah, for real. And I'm on that side. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Elizabeth, will you mm-hmm. marry me? <laughs> like, hey, it's your, I see how you be looking at Elizabeth. Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> I love that you're. You have such an old soul, bro. I love it. You know, okay, so and then also, hey. bro, check this mm-hmm. out. Fucking um. Bret Hart, the the excellence of execution, of woo! Of the pink and black attack, bro. I love Bret. Oh the man, Hart. he made pink look cool, bro. He did, bro. Exactly. Way before Fat Joe and Cameron and all them made pink a thing, bro. Bret Hart, bro. And you then, know, here with pink towels, putting pink in sharpshooters on the trampoline. <laughs> right? You feel me? <laughs> Bro, I remember yeah, I remember man. playing wrestling as a kid, bro. We would fuck each other up, hitting, slapping figure four leg locks oh, and shit, slapping sharpshooters, and those kick. motherfuckers hurt. <laughs> those yeah, motherfuckers right. hurt, bro. Even oh, a cri- yeah. slapping a crippler cross face, which is goes in the, that's another one of my favorites, bro. Chris Benoit, bro, the Rabbit Wolverine. He Whoa, he he's dope. He knows how to yeah. sell shit. Ah, hitting you with the chops. Oh, my God. Ah. Just and your chest will be red as a bitch. You know what I'm saying? You're ah, if, chopping the if fuck the out of you. If the situation would not have happened with him, he probably would be one of the greatest wrestlers ever. I like, still put him without there. Without a question. I still put him there. I think it's too much politics where it's like Vince McMahon just wanted to save face and he was like, "Listen, 
you know, we gotta we gotta separate ourselves from that name completely. You know what I mean? Because because they're they're a corporation. You know what I mean? But okay, so um, Love Undertaker, obviously legend. You know what I'm saying? Stone Cold Steve Austin. I hold them up there with Bret Hart. They're like my one A, one B. You know what I mean? Um, man, uh, who who? Uh, uh, Shawn Michaels. I gotta put him up there. You know what I mean? One of my favorites. You know what I'm saying? Just the just the little fucker, bro. The little fucker just the the greatest showman ever. You know what I'm saying? And then obviously yeah. his favorite was Ric Flair. So I put Ric Flair in one of, and Ric Flair wasn't one of the greatest wrestlers, like as far as like what he did in the ring, but as a showman, woo, and you know, just being the, the originator of the figure four yeah. leg lock, bro, like love mm-hmm. Ric Flair, you know what I mean? Love the, oh, the about, by the way. I didn't mention this. His daughter Charlotte, yeah, is kind of like the most accomplished female wrestler in history. You can easily make that like case. Yeah, man. Yeah. Like that's easy because she has won gold in every every women's championship, single women's championship. Yep. And she WWE, got it. Charlotte has won. And you know what? It, it's only it's it's only right, man, because you know she's representing her father. And her brother, who who unfortunately passed, you know what I'm saying, tragically, you know what I'm saying, because maybe yeah. because of trying to, you know, being in the shadow of Ric Flair, you know what I mean? That that thirty thirty is also that thirty for thirty Ric Flair. That shit is also, in, in, you know, one of the greatest documentaries as well. But um, who else? Well, oh, man, I gotta put my man oozing with my cheese, man. Scott Hall, the Razor Ramon, bro. Oh yeah. Razor the Ramon, bag. bro. Like. Incredible. Um, who, else, who else do I got here? Um, I will say, you know, not really, not really a, a by any means a technical wrestler at all. But man, Mick Foley or Mankind or, or Cactus Jack, you know, dude, love whichever one you want to call. Man, love him because this motherfucker oh, yeah. just takes a beat and he puts on a great show. Love, man, the Hell in the Cell, the original Hell in the Cell match, bro. You mm-hmm. remember that shit? Oh man! Woo! It, Choke slamming him through the goddamn top of the cage, and that shit wasn't even scripted. It was just the, the you know the the roof caved in, and that motherfucker fell to yep. the bottom, and like, or even him being put on a because of that, they put him on a stretcher, and then then he, then he he gets off the stretcher, he's like, fuck that, I'm finishing this match. Like all that shit wasn't scripted at all. Like, and the Undertaker standing on top of the cage, shaking his head like this motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like. You know what I'm saying, or or uh, hitting him with the chair, and it busted his whole shit wide open, and or was it the chair? Yeah. He busted his shit wide open, where, and then they go, they get in on a close up, and he's bleeding profusely from the mouth, and he sticks his tongue through the hole in his lip, and it's like, yo, the man- mankind was so great. Oh my god! Man. Like you know what I mean, it's- just entertainment, bro. And then I got some honorable mentions, you know. Uh, Mr. Perfect, you know, always just a great match, just a great looking match. Anytime he was involved, you know, great technical wrestler, you know, what I mean, somebody who uh, who also like, you know, was one of Bret Hart's, you know, in- inspirations, like, you know, what I'm saying one of his peers that he that he uh, that he looked to, um, you know, to sharpen the look of, of his wrestling. I do want to throw hey, in. Um, what's that? Uh, I was going to say, fun fact, um, you did name two of them, Macho Man and Mr. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, the the city of Minneapolis, the area in Minnesota. Yep. It produced a lot of famous wrestlers, like those two. Yeah, even uh, uh what's his name, bro? Uh, it, it, the, the the governor. The road warriors are from there. Oh, were the road uh, wars? The the you know, the the the, the, the art, what is it? Um, the, the what was uh, it? Hulk and Animal. Yeah, no, no, but what was their shit called? Um, the road warriors. Uh, they, they had an acronym for it. LOD, the um, Legion of Doom. The LOD. Yeah, Legion of Doom. Yeah. Oh, word. Yeah, I didn't know bro, from Minnesota. Bro. Yes, bro. Like, watching the, um, one of the, doc- the documentary, I think it was on, um, Hulk. I think that's the one that died, right? Yeah, yeah. I believe, uh, yeah, I believe that's the one that passed. And, uh, they were just going through the history of how they, you know, became even a tag team. Uh, and just naming all the people who they were trained with, yeah. who actually ended up becoming really famous wrestlers, it was crazy. Bro, okay. In, in that section, there's a the, story, bro. Listen. There's mm-hmm. a story, right? Because I, I, want, I want to shoot this out because just in, just in case you cut off. So, in Bret Hart's okay. book, so Bret Hart had a book, The Real Cartoon World of Wrestling. 
you know, uh, this the, the the Brett the Hitman Hart story, right? He met, he has a he has a uh, he has a, an entry where he's talking about when he first won the Intercontinental title, right? And and you know he 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 was a former tag team partner with Jim the Anvil Nightheart, obviously, and like you know you know back in wrestling, remember you said if you're not performing, you know you could be gone, and so Bret Hart, even though that was part of the deal for you know for that Stu Hart gave him was like yo you gotta. You, know, you got to bring my son along. So when he won the Intercontinental title, he was looking at the title and he was like, man, I'm going to be here for a while. Because during those times, if you're a champion, you're a champ for like a year. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, the, the, the title didn't change hands frequently like it, it did, in the, you know, in the later 90s and into and, and, and nowadays. You know what I mean? You were the champ. Yeah. Yeah, you, you were the guy, right? So he's the Intercontinental champion and they're all out celebrating. All Rowdy Piper, the Legion of Doom, you know, goddamn... Um, you know, Hulk Hogan, they're all in a bar. Because, you know, that's what they used to do. They used to get loaded. These motherfuckers were after, yeah. right? It don't matter what city they're in. They're all going to whatever local dive bar. And these wrestlers are up in there. They're getting bar fights, all the shit. But anyway, so on this night, you know what I'm saying? Um, it was such, it was, it was, it was, a, it was a, a successful uh, WrestleMania, if I remember correctly. You know what I'm saying? So here comes, so they're all in the bar. You know, the Hart Foundation, the goddamn, the Legion of Doom. Rowdy Piper, Macho Man, you know, they're all in attendance. So here comes Hulk Hogan, Vince McMahon, and a bunch of suits. A bunch of, you know, some executives. They, they come in, they're already, they're already faded, right? So they walk into the bar. Uh-huh. Obviously, Vince McMahon, he's buying all the drinks. Yeah, it's on me, right? They're all celebrating. And then, you know, uh, uh, so here, here, goes, here goes the Legion of, uh, Legion of Doom. They, they put... You know they put Vince McMahon on the shoulders, and then and then and then uh, uh, I forget who flies. I think it's Animal who would fly out the air, right? Remember the the, the, the Doomsday device, the finishing maneuver, mm-hmm. right? So yeah. so so Animal he got Vince McMahon on his shoulders, and he's faded. You know Vince McMahon he's trying to wiggle around, and you know Animal ain't letting him go nowhere. Hawk jumps on top of the bar, and he's and then and then Hulk Hogan the kiss ass he is. He's like, no, 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 don't do this, don't do this. And then, so then they let Vince McMahon down. They're all laughing. And then Jim the Anvil Nightheart, right? He turns to Bret Hart. He goes, the Hart Foundation, we would have hit our finishing maneuver. Because they had like a, um, you know, the Hart Foundation where he would kind of kind of bear hug. Jim the Anvil Nightheart would kind of pick up the, the, the opponent, kind of like a bear hug. Yeah. And then, you know, and then, you know, Bret Hart would, would jump off the, the top rope and hit him with like a flying bulldog. You know what I mean? So yeah, like, yeah. Like, right? Do I have that correct in my memory? But anyways, so. Um, yeah, it was like, he would, he would go to the ropes. He would run off the ropes. Oh, the ropes. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. He wasn't off the top rope. Yeah, see, I knew I had that wrong, right? See, this is why I bring you like on. You're a specialist. Clothesline, spine buster. Exactly. You're right. There it is. Yeah. Yes, thank you for that, because I don't want to be inaccurate, right? So he goes like this. He no goes, no he goes, uh, Jim, the, the, Jim uh, Nightheart, he looks at Bret Hart. He goes, the Hart Foundation would have hit that maneuver. And then Bret Hart looks, <laughs> he looks down at his Intercontinental Championship, and he goes, I'm going to be here for a while. So he goes, pick them up right so you know they're all laughing they're all drinking taking shots jim the anvil nightheart he go he goes up into the circle they're all talking and you know he's he's kind of next to Vince man he's kind of laughing and then out of nowhere he picks him up you know what i mean he gets him in position bret hart jumps on the stool and fucking hits him with the maneuver and then he's land he's on top of goddamn Vince McMahon, and he's like i'm sorry vince i had to do it you know what I mean? And Vince McMahon, is, the wind is knocked out of him, and he's like, that's all good. You're a good kid. You're a good kid. You know what I mean? And I'm just laughing because, man, that's a cool story. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah. It's, you know what? It's, yeah, it actually is believable. Like, I can see it being Because they, they actually had the father-son relationship, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that, you know, him and, him and Vince McMahon, that's why, that's why Bret Hart was scorned for so many years that – they would, you know, that they, they would, you know, create a storyline that went against him. You know what I mean? Like, because, you know, Bret Hart is also one of those guys, bro. He really believed this shit. Like, even though it was kayfabe, he really believed in it. Like, bro, I'm the champion. I'm yeah. like, you know, you know, he was like the, 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 you know, the face of Canada in his mind. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. especially around like those years, like he was Canada's. King in the sense, like, yeah, man. Uh, 
he and you had that, and then also HBK. He and Brett did not have the best relationship. No, not at all, man. During those years. And, and they and, were both fucking Sunny. Remember that bitch, Sunny? Like. Yeah. That, she kind of drove. Like, she oh, kind of was the tension between the two initially before they started their own storyline to together. Remember before they had their story arc together, where like, you know what I mean, leading Brett up to the Iron been Man. Married, though. I know, but, but see, he that's was the married thing, though. Whole time. But he was on his he was on his scumbag shit, where you know what I mean, he was fucking around <laughs> on the side. You know what I mean? Like you know, uh, Bret Hart. Bret know. Hart has a lot of. Bret Hart has a lot of skeletons in his closet, man. Like you know, because growing up, he was the clean cut. You know, like, you know, you had Hulk yeah. Hogan take your vitamins, blah, blah, blah. You know, say your prayers at oh, night. Know about Hogan. Right? But then Hogan, yeah. But then see Bret Hart, he, he 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 played it well until, like, the internet came around and you started hearing all this other shit. Like, Bret Hart, you know, he, he's he's a regular dude, too. He's You know, he got some he got some secrets, man, some dark ones. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, he, he wasn't, I think, where it was, like, with Shawn Michaels, he would just let his stuff be known, per se. Mm-hmm. Instead of Brett hiding it, which is good professionally, because you know, like with the whole, I mean, remember when Brett, uh, not Brett, when Sean lost the title to Stone Cold. Now I know you probably heard of the story about if he didn't do the job, the Undertaker was gonna, you know, handle him. Oh yeah, behind the scenes. Oh yeah, he yeah. was. He was. And he was the big bro. He's big bro. Like, and, he's the enforcer. He, Brett, respected the business, but it was still like if, his ego grew to his ego grew to a level yeah. where it was like, I you know because he was the guy after Hulk Hogan, Hulk Hogan yeah. was the face of wrestling forever and, then, and for the WWF and then after the fact it well, was it Bret was, Hart and he couldn't. It was Brett and Sean. He, yeah, no, it was Sean. It was Sean eventually. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if, you know, as far as like w- w- who held the world titles, because you know, once you get the world title, oh. you're not going back to intercontinental, you know, intercontinental yeah. division. You know what I mean? What happened? He got the title and he was the face of the company. That's when they started pushing the new generation, and they actually started declining. That's when Nitro and WCW yeah. started to. They started Sorry, to take you over. Know, having a little food. Are are you aware? Are you aware of the uh, the monopoly that you know um, uh, of uh, the click? Yeah. So the click, for real, oh, yeah. the real click was Shawn Michaels, Triple H, Diesel, Razor Ramon, and a, a one two three kid. But these dudes, mm-hmm. they controlled wrestling from behind the scenes. They divide and conquered. They took over everything, bro. Like you know, if, if you if you listen, to, if you want to look it up, look up um. Any, any of the episodes that Stone Cold brings on any of those guys, they talk about all that shit. How like they were in Vince McMahon's ear, you know what I'm saying? That how they just controlled everything, bro. Like it was crazy. And Bret Hart was outside of that circle, obviously. So, you know, he he you know yeah. he, he was a victim of that shit. And, but it, it was great for wrestling as a whole. Yep. But like you know, Bret Hart, he just you know he took he Bret Hart. They always he had a reputation of taking himself too serious. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. But yeah, man, this is only this is only the beginning, bro. Same thing, you know. Oh, man, yeah, sure. this is only the beginning, man. I, you know, I, sure, I knew, I, I, you know, I knew we were gonna go like the two the two hour mark for sure. I, I, I had a feeling because this was, you know, this is such a great, you know, part of my life, wrestling and and you know, what I mean, like, and it, it, you know, and I love that we have the VL connection, man. I'm, I'm actually gonna hit him as soon as we get off, man. I'm gonna hit him and be like, bro, I got one of the goat leagues on, bro. But, uh, but, but, yeah, but, I'm the I'm the Jags guy. <laughs> That's my name in the chat. And I will. Oh, you're the Jags guy. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. My name is the Jaguars, and I be yeah. I do the um, I do the website for for the league too. Nice. Like as far as keeping up with the stats, you know, players and stuff. Okay, and okay, I will say this though. One more before you go. I'll let you go on this one. One of my greatest matches of all time was all the ladder matches between goddamn Razor Ramon and Shawn Michaels. Classics. Classic. Classics. WrestleMania X. Um, I forget the other one. I think WrestleMania X was the first one. And it was when uh, Shawn Michaels, he made he made his own uh, intercontinental title, like the, the, the you know, the, uh, the bootleg. 
And it's yeah. like, yeah, so they had two intercontinental titles, and bro, that was epic, man. And then even the other one, where uh, uh, I think it was also for the intercontinental title, and uh, you know, just just as a kid, man, it just it, you know, it's instilled in my memory, bro. It's 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 it's, it's, it's stitched in my memory, just that, that you know, just putting the uh, putting the the ladder on the apron and and on the barrier. Where the audience is at, and then you know, lay, laying him out, and then you know, moon salting off of it, like, shit was mm-hmm. fucking awesome, bro. Yeah, fucking awesome. Man, back in those days, and a moon salt was like, whoa. Right. Even uh, now, people. Yeah, it's all day. Yeah, but yeah, man, my man, the host of the Zeno Cast, V C S Z. It has been a pleasure and an honor to bring you on. I knew this was gonna be epic, man. I'm gonna have you on again. I can't wait to uh, when you when you when you launch your channel. I'm gonna help promote it, man. I'm all about that. I'm 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 just I'm a, I'm a special kind of guy, man. I'm just I don't give a fuck about you know egos and shit like that. I, I just love to to promote great content, and you know what I mean. And uh, yeah. you know you do provide that, and uh, I'm looking forward to your your channel. Everybody tune in to the Xeno cast on all streaming platforms. Hey, VCSZ. Thank you, my brother. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you, you, man. Thank you for having me on. And Thank you, man. You are doing your thing. Like, I want to get to your level. You might think you're not at the level that you want to be at, but you're still at a nice level that I'm trying to get at. So, Thank you for even, you know, being inspiration to me. Because, you know, sometimes you do things and you might feel confident, but over time you might lose your confidence. And you might just need just a little bit of, you know, nudge to, to help you start back up and get back on track. And, and you are definitely that, that nudge that I need. Hey, to man, I really you. appreciate that, bro. I really appreciate that because I just figure going through life it's easier to just be truthful and be honest. And like, I don't, I wouldn't waste my time or any other man's time being like, Hey man, I think your shit is great. And I'm lying. You know what I mean? Like it's -hmm. the same way. I even reached out to the goat, man. I was like, bro, I I think you're fucking ill on Madden. You know what I mean? I want to do something different on the podcast. Like, can I bring you on? Like, and I was like, Oh, and he's a Raider fan. I was like, great. Let's cover the Raiders as well. You know what I mean? Like, I just want to bring you on bro. And let's just talk some Madden because it's another one of those things too. I was a Madden head all the way up until like high school, where like, because you know, where, where, you know, you only get 24 hours in a day. Where I was like, and I'm such a, an, an addict. I'm, I have an addictive personality. Like whatever I'm on, I'm obsessed over. So you know, you know, outside of my children, because I am obsessed off you know making them great. You know what I mean? Like it's like you know, I'm, I'm on this music or I'm on this podcasting, and you know what I mean? Like, but I really appreciate that man because. You know, from the outside looking in, if, if it looks like it's that great, man, I'm doing my job, bro. And and I, and I appreciate you and, and your content. And you know what I mean? Like, with this, I, you know, this is just the beginning of a beautiful relationship, man. It's the same thing I told uh, VL the GOAT, man. Like, you know, it's just all about us supporting each other and, 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 and moving forward, man. Yes, man, it is. That's exactly what it's about. Yeah, man. Well, shit, H-Town, stand up. You know what I'm saying? Shout out. To my man, the host of the Zeno cast, the C S Z. You have a good one, my brother. You too, man. Enjoy your evening, bro. For sure, my brother. Thank you again. Yeah, playmakers. I'ma put all the descriptions in. I'ma put all the descriptions where you can find all his content. We're gonna go ahead and make sure that you guys are very aware of everything. He has to offer. You know what I'm saying? He is a GMM Network affiliate officially now. Man, thank you. Thank you, Playmakers. We can't do this without y'all. Hey.